Hey friends, camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. That's a good RV, Pawpaw. Well, welcome you to the Kirk, Kent Kirkland Field, home of the Picky Maroon Tide baseball team. As Picayune is getting ready to take on the George County Rebels tonight in Game 7 of district play. So far, the Maroon Tide have started off the district season 6-0. and They swept Pascagoula and then swept West Harrison last week. We'll get into talking about a few of those games uh, here before we get started with baseball tonight. Tommy Upton along with Devin Hedgepath, the long-lost wayward son, is home tonight. He has traveled near and far and had to watch family and sisters and, and then take two weeks of vacation and all kind of stuff. But but back well, Tommy, tonight. Tommy, we're, we're playing on schedule tonight. That's what. <laughs> glad to have you back tonight. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> I've been keeping up every game as much as I could. But, yeah, uh, got a senior uh, sister on the softball team and can't can't miss that. That's my first prior obligation. And uh, But, but man, just the tide's been, been exciting over the past, past six games of district play. Just – um, seem to get something going and going in the right direction. Yeah, they have done uh, very, very well uh, so far. Quite honestly, uh, didn't really get challenged against Pascagoula. Uh, but last week against West Harrison, you know, all three of those games were, were pretty challenged. Picking won all three, but, but they were pretty challenged. I know you've got some stats, and we'll pull those up and talk about them in just a second. But we want to welcome you to Maroon Todd Baseball. We're here at the Kirk. We're going to get started probably in about 10 minutes or so. You're listening to the Paul Balls Campers and Cars pregame show on WRJW. Welcome to the river where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, Get involved and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. We're back at the Kirk, Tommy Upton along with Devin Hedgepath as we are getting ready to get underway here for the seventh game of the district series or the district season, the first game of a three game set against George County. We'll be obviously at home tonight. We'll be visiting Loosedale, playing at George County Friday night and then back here Saturday afternoon for the third game of the season or, or the series, I should say. So I'll give you starting lineups. Both teams have already taken their infield. Uh, the coaches have not met yet. At the mound, the umpires are still swapping over, and we got a few minutes before we're actually going to get this thing underway. I'll go ahead and give you the lineups, though, so you'll have those if you're scoring at home. First for the visiting uh, George County Rebels, Ben Davis will be leading off play in second base. Blaine Green will be catching. He'll be hitting in the second spot. Gage Reeves will be the center fielder. He'll be batting third. Uh, Kayla Haver. I'm going to mess that name up all night tonight. I don't know why I can't say that name. Kayla Haver will be at third base. Trip Lightsey will be in right field. Andrew Nielsen will be the pitcher. He's a good one. understand that he is, I believe, a Mississippi State commit. Uh, big, tall kid that throws the ball pretty well. So we'll be facing their ace tonight from George County, Mr. Uh, Nielsen. Alex Wade will be out in left field. He'll be batting in the seventh spot. Garrett Dixon will be at first base. Carson Pierce will be the designated hitter. He'll be hitting for Jared Eubanks, um, that'll be the shortstop. Now for Picky, a little bit different lineup and a little bit of a surprise. Maybe for you guys listening in, Parker Helton is still in that leadoff spot. You know, last time we called together, Devin Parker was hitting down in that number nine hole, and he's moved up to the leadoff spot. And, man, he's just – he came out on fire that first week against Pasigula. I think he had seven hits in three games, had about four hits last week, and uh, he is – just ballooned his average. Do you have a number on Parker where he is hitting right now? Yeah, Parker Helton. Let's see. As of last game, so that that'd be the. So he's hitting. He's brought his average all the way up to 333. Um, he's got an on-base percentage of 419. Uh, 18 hits, 
17 singles, one triple, but and yeah. them singles, they, they come in clutch for, especially now in the leadoff spot. And I was able to <clears throat> watch a couple of games and, and see him execute very well. I mean, we always talked about him in the bottom of the lineup and doing such a great job and flipping it back over to the top of the lineup. But now he's in that, in that prime role and doing a great job at it. That's right, yep. So we uh, talked about it was almost like having another leadoff hitter down there. So he had two leadoffs back-to-back. But Parker's moved up to the leadoff spot the last three weeks and just been doing an outstanding job. Kyler King is anchoring the top of the lineup in the second spot. He'll be at shortstop tonight. Jamie Lumpkin will be over second base, and he'll be hitting third. Morgan Kraft's going to hit fourth. He'll play first base. Landon Watts will hit fifth tonight. He'll be catching. Cooper Moreau will be at third base. They'll be hitting in the sixth hole. Landon Franklin will be the designated hitter, hit number seven. He will be hitting for Brady Robertson, who will be on the mound tonight. So a little bit of a surprise. Brady got cleared to pitch today. So I don't I'm sure he's on a on a pitch count. Don't know what it is, if I had to guess a couple of innings, two, three innings, but he's gonna get a little exposure tonight, and we're excited to see him. Glad that he's healed up, glad that he's got a release, and uh, looking forward to, to the left hander throwing tonight. Brunson Stockstall will be hitting eighth. He'll be out in right field. And Justin Stockstall will be hitting ninth, and he will be in left field. Give us those next three batting uh, averages. I get we put we call Parker out, but let's start from the top. Give us the, the top three batters and their averages and a little bit of stats about the Maroon Tide so far this season. Yeah, so uh, Landon Watts has kind of woke up as a sleeping giant here in, in the uh, district play. And so Landon Watts is leading the team now with an uh, average of 429. Uh, behind him is Kyler Keene with an average of 407, and Cooper, Cooper Morrow with an average of 362. But uh, but man, it, <clears throat> Landon Watts, and I'm sure sure to go and be in the back of his mind for a long time, uh, for years to come, be one of them games that high school talks about. And, but seeing him in the West Harrison game in the ninth inning, just wake up and uh, hit, hit that base clearing triple against West Harrison that pretty much sealed or, or did seal the deal. And Cooper behind him adding a little insurance there, but. And that was so good to see, and and it's good to see. You, you look at you look at the top averages here, and uh, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, six of your prime guys hitting over three hundred, Tommy, and that that that's crucial, crucial, in in high school baseball. Uh, Absolutely, you got to be able to hit the baseball to, to score. You know, most of the time you can get around a, on a few walks, but uh, most of the time you got to be able to hit the score, and that's something that the room tide is quite honestly been missing the last two years this year the bats have seemed to started to wake up and it's kind of been some some um unlikely characters if we had to tag a most improved from last year to this year certainly would be landon watts as you called out he has just done a phenomenal job he was always a very good defensive catcher but he sometimes he made poor decisions defensively he had tremendous tools um, and then he struggled a bit last year pitching, just couldn't seem to find his own through in a couple games in the beginning of the year, and then really never pitched after that, just struggled. Um, and the bat was up and down. He hit a couple home runs, but he was he was kind of either big fly or strikeout. He, he just couldn't get his tool set together. And to watch him this year grow into that body and grow into his maturity, um, you know, leading the team in hitting now, and just came in that game you are talking about at West Harrison, not only did he drive in, the the three go-ahead runs but he also came in and pitched the last five innings and won the game on the mound so just outstanding performance by Landon and he's he's kind of stepped up and filled one of those spots that we didn't know who was going to fill when Brady went down you know you get a big left-hander that's really carried the load along with Tanner it's been Busby and and Robertson for the last three years so we didn't know what was going to happen knew we had some guys out there but just didn't know how it was going to play out and uh, Landon's one of those guys that give, give you some innings and and step in and and um, we've also had Mason come in. You know, he's a transfer into Picayune. Right. And that was going to be a big to-do this year, too, is w- what were we going to do when Landon had to pitch? And we thought about maybe going to have to pull Morgan off first base, and then what are you going to do for first base? So it, it, turned into, it turned into a big game of Jenga, quite honestly, if you had to start moving people around. Uh, but Mason's moved in this year. What a good job defensively he's done. When he's called in to come in, he's done a great job catching. So lots of folks throughout – uh, the Tide lineup have stepped up and uh, filled in some spots, and that's what we expect. Look, look this was going to be tough this week. These guys are good. They can play baseball. Uh, they've played us very, very tough the last couple of years. they got a couple of uh, really good arms that we're going to see tonight and probably Friday night. And then the third guy here is not that bad either. So uh, we're going to see some arms. They, they've they always been pretty good offensively and played solid defense. So it's going to get a little bit tougher this week, but I still think we can win two out of three 
I think we're sitting pretty good. Now that we've got Brady back, hopefully he's at least at 75 or 80%. I would be ecstatic if he's at that, you know, just coming right out of the right out of the gate throwing. So we'll, we'll see. But that's kind of my take. What, what do you see so far in, in the kind of midway through the series or the season? Well, yeah, I mean, it, it – it's pretty much just a te- to me. It's a testament to the maturity of the senior class and the junior class as well. That it's kind of kind of the expectancy. Kind of you you, you see them start young as tenth and ninth graders, and then move two years later. It they've played together this entire time, and so but everything's come to fruition now. I mean, what we've we're looking forward to two or three years ago ha- is came to life now, and it's it's really like I said, a testament to the senior class of just maturing. The, the reps in, the reps out of, of in the field, off the field, that they're coming together, the cohesion of the team is 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 very prevalent right now. And it's it's kinda like we talked about in the uh in the first game against Pedal, where it seems like they set the bar high for themselves. And we had a little dwindle down uh in in the pre pre district play and uh but man these guys have come back together and like we've talked about, when they play together as a team, when they play together as a whole team together uh, man, these guys, they, they, they seem to light it up. The bats come alive. They feed off each other. The, the, the defense feeds off of that. Um, and, man, it's, it's, I'm excited for the matchup tonight because go, <clears throat> because George County has been a great, great baseball program for, for years in and years out. Uh, between them and East Central over there on the, the east coast of Mississippi, it's, um, it's kind of a powerhouse between them two. And so it, it's going to be a great matchup tonight. Looking forward to the, the arms throwing. As you mentioned, Brady coming back, man, what a, what an awesome awesome sight to see of quick recovery. Um, but what a testament, too, to the guys that, that filled in those roles and filled in those voids for while he was out. And, and that, that's been a huge part, huge part, as you said, of, of him him being out and, as you said, it's just it's always it's the next next guy up mentality. That's right. Um, the next man up mentality is prevalent in every every aspect of sports. Um, I guess other than tennis or golf, <laughs> but other than that, man, it, it, you got to be you got to be willing and got to be ready. That's right. That's exactly right. Yeah, a lot of uh, expectations out of this team. You know, they most of these guys, the core, as we've talked about a few different times, have. Have started for three games. You got five or six guys who started for three years. I'm sorry. Um, so there's a lot of expectations and high expectations out of that team. And sometimes teams with high expectations can crumble. Sometimes they just can't handle that pressure. So far, these guys have really shouldered that load. They've they've lived up to the expectations. Still, a lot of baseball left to go. Uh, but I like what I've seen so far. About halfway through the season, and through the first two series of the district season. Guys seem to be playing pretty good baseball, and uh, I like our chances from here. Well, you're listening to the Pawpaws Campers and Cars pregame show, and uh, Mr. Jerry Grubbs has just announced George County. He's fixing to announce the Maroon Tide. Once he does that, we'll be back here for the anthem. We'll be ready to play baseball. You're listening to Picky Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Hey, neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Lost Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. We're back here at the Kirk. We're getting ready to play the National Anthem. And then we're going to play baseball. I'll turn you over to the PA announcer, Mr. Jerry Grubbs. For the play of our National Anthem.
Well, Tommy Upton here with Devin Hitchback back at the Kurt. We appreciate you joining us for the Pawpaw Scampers and Cars pregame show. The players have been announced. The umpires and the coaches have bet. The anthem has been played. Devin, I think we're getting ready to play baseball. We're going to have a first pitch here. We'll get his name and see who that is. He's just throwing out the first pitch. Eli Seals just threw out the first pitch. Brady Robinson will step in and start his warm-up tosses. So, Devin, a warm and muggy night. Would that be a good way to describe this one? Yeah. It's, I think it's the first time we can describe one like this. Yeah, we've been blessed with some really nice weather, but this is just a yucky night. It's it's hot. It's muggy. Yep. The wind is blowing from right to left. Uh Probably across out into left center field power alley. If you kind of describe it that way, it's looking at the flag. It's a pretty good win. I'd have to say 15 to 20 maybe. And uh, we'll see if it plays any sort of factor tonight. But ball's going to be heavy. The air's heavy with just this humidity. So I don't think the ball will travel very far tonight. But we'll see. Stranger things have happened. Yeah, I think the wind is picking up. Uh, I don't think it was – this heavy probably 30 minutes ago when I walked in but uh, but it, it can always be a factor here but, but like you said it, it muggy muggy night got to play through it uh, play under the lights focus on the lights not the muggy night but but man I it's it's such a blessing seeing seeing Brady Robertson right now just throwing I mean throwing the ball on that mound I mean it's his first time pitching uh, I believe Timmy said what was it? Let's see. Since May of last year. May 12th of last year. Yeah, it's so, been a while. So 11 months near about. It um, has been a while. And so let's see. <clears throat> As you mentioned, I, I I believe, too, that he has probably a short leash, um, especially on pitch count with his first time pitching live since May 12th. And, uh, man, we just – we know he got released, but uh, he needs to focus on being released and – Nothing dealing with that foot and just roll with it until he can't roll anymore. And if, if that's the case, then coach go get him. But that's right. We got a tough team to face, but, but uh, we're going to get things underway. Well, the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picune, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. So leading off for George County, be Ben Davis, the second baseman. Here's Robertson's first pitch. It's going to be in there for a fastball on the outside corner. That's a good way to start. 0-1 to Ben Davis. That's going to be a breaking pitch. It's going to be hit out into right field. Gets by Jamie. Ball not hit extremely hard, but hit hard enough to get past Jamie. Out into right field, Brunson will throw it in. Davis starts off with a single for George County. Yeah, I mean, that was a good piece of hitting. I mean, his his hands stayed through the zone, so to speak, for baseball terms. But, I mean, he he, he recognized the breaking pitch and slowed himself down and just did, you let, the, let his hands do the work. Blaine Green, the catcher, will step in now. The runner on first. He's going to square the bunt and miss the bunt. So, it'll be 0-1, and they're going to make a snap throw down to first. Watts makes a snap throw. There was a tag, and there's wow. a debate about whether he was out. I was looking down, I'll be honest, right, look, looking down, scoring the play. Well, I'll be honest for you, Tommy. I'll be honest for you. His, right. his foot slipped across the bag with the wet, muggy night, mm -hmm. and Morgan had the tag on him the entire time. And clearly the first the, the umpire in the field didn't hear it, so Evan's going to appeal right now to the home plate umpire. It um, generally never goes well, but it doesn't hurt in this case because he's already been called safe. Well, Tommy, if he was doing his job he was as looking. the home plate umpire – he should have seen it. Wow. So they're going to they're gonna get together and confirm the safe call. So you have a snap throw. The runner squared around, or I'm sorry, the batter, green, catch, the catcher, squared around, attempted to bunt, missed it. Ball was outside. Landing was going that way. Makes a snap throw down to Kraft. Davis tries to dive back in. Slides off the bag, but no call. So 0-1, green is going to square again early. He's going to pull it back and slash that one out into right field. So that'll be two singles right off the bat. That's just pull it back and slash. Again, ball not hit very hard, but it's hit almost in the exact same spot in the three-four hole over there between first and second. So now you got runners at first and second here. Nobody out. Nobody out. 
Gage Reeves, the center fielder, is going to come up here. A little bit of a jam for Brady. Not a very nice welcome to come back into the 2024 season. No, nope, but I, th I think that's what we're going to be in, in the wheelhouse for these next three tonight and the next two games to follow. This George County team is good. They're First pitch to Reeves going to be out on the outside corner for a strike of they've, one. They've always played discipline, uh, play between the ears, so to, so to speak. I mean, that means playing with your mind. That runners at first and second, top of the first here, swinging a miss by Reeves. So he'll go 0 2, see if Brady can pitch himself out of it. A 6 4 3 would be beautiful here. Yeah, we don't need nothing, nothing close to strike zone here. Kyler's holding the runner on, now gets back to his spot. Shortstop, that's going to be hit right where Kyler was. Right back up the middle, it's going to be a single. Parker's not going to field it cleanly. The runner's going to come, cut off by Morgan. And so that was kind of a calamity of errors by picking the ball. It was a single. Runner from, from second scored. And the Parker couldn't get the handle on it. Then the throw was pretty good. Morgan cut it, probably should have let that one go, and it would have been a bang-bang play at the plate. Well, even, but even, even though he did But the end result is going to be first and second right. with a runner score. Go yeah, ahead. Even though he didn't let it go, he still had time to make the make relay. The relay. But he closer. bobbled the relay and uh, just Ty didn't have a chance there. On, I mean, three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles to lead off Brady's welcome home tour, so to speak. Yeah. <laughs> Not very – not very nice at George County. Kaylor Havard's going to step in now, the third baseman. So he'll do so with runners at first and second. We're just underway, top of the first here. Yeah. George County's started the game with three singles. Got a run to go to show for it. They're up one nothing here with nobody out. As I said, runners at first and second. So Havard will step in here. A little bit of a visit by Watts out to maybe talk to his battery mate, Robertson. Here's the pitch to Haver. That's going to be down low for a ball. 1 0. So George County has jumped out here and, and hit some fastballs. See what we can do here. That ball, the last ball, was probably the hardest ball hit of the three. That one's going to be inside 2 0 now to Haver. First two was kind of, excuse me, singles. Out into right field. That one was hit pretty well right up the middle. Yeah, third base coach had the hold sign that was hit so hard to center field. That one's going to be swung and chopped foul. So 2 1 now to Havard. Yeah, a little, little thank you swing there. That 2 0 fastball was up well up in the zone and Havard fouled it back. So here's the 2 1. Brady's going to spin and get the runner back to second. No throw, just a spin move. So he'll step back in, come set. Here's a 2-1 pitch. That one's going to be lifted out into to shallow right. Jamie's going to come up with it. I thought that was going to get over his head. But it kind of hit off the bottom of the barrel. Now it's going to be a play at the third base. And we're going to throw that one out into left field. So a little inside-out handlebar action that goes out to Jamie. He makes the out, then throws the ball away, doesn't get it to Brady. It gets by Brady, and so Watts picks it up, but that allows both runners to move up a base. So now with two outs, sorry, with one out, we got runners at second and third. So another just a, kind of a sloppy play. Yeah. Devin? I mean. Just a sloppy play. That's yeah, really that's all you can really say. all you can say. The, the coach is appealing – the interference call by Cooper, but it's it's in my opinion, uh, well, it's not interference. Ball, he yeah. was he was pursuing the ball, making a play on the ball. He has every right to do so. What what happens thereafter as he's doing that? That's not his fault. He's making he has the right to make a play on the ball. That's right. Yeah, the George County coach have a conversation with the field umpire, but his player slid in. But you're right, there was a throw from Watts down to third, and Cooper had to lean over because the ball was thrown up the line. But the end result here is we got second and third. George County's up one nothing. And that first pitch to Lightsey, who is the right fielder, is going to be up for a ball, 1-0. That one's going to be lifted, but it's going to get out of play, so 1-1. One, one. 
and hits right on top of our head in this loud tin box that we sit in. Yeah, Brady. <coughs> Brady's been when, he, when he's been missing, he's been missing high, high, middle, and high in the zone, and that's prime prime zones for hitters for this George County team. That one's going to be high, two one. Now to Brady, I mean to Lightsey from Brady. Here's the wind up for Brady. He'll deliver the 2 1 pitch. That one's going to be fouled off 2 2. A little bit of velocity, I would say, down. I'm getting on the radar 80 82. Right. Brady was mid to upper 80s before. So that's to be expected. Not in shape. Probably still a little tender on that foot and leg, too. So all that's, I think, okay. It's just getting used to it. Now it's going to hit Lightsey on the foot. It's going to hit him on the foot. So that will load the bases on a hit by pitch. It's going to bring the pitcher, Andrew Nielsen, to the plate. Nielsen's a big youngin'. Yeah, he's 6'3", 6 6'4". 6 um, he'll be on the bump tonight. and I mean, he's, he's, not, he's not slender by any means either. He's not a beanpole. He's a, he's more a like big a, guy. That's going to draw a walk from uh, Coach Evan out to the mound. While he does so, we'll step away here. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Get back in the game with Don Therapy Center. Jamison Don has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, hivamat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. So after a quick visit, Andrew Nielsen's going to step in here, the pitcher. Base is full of Rebels. They've already scored one on three hits and a couple of errors by Picky. Brady's in a full-blown jam now, Devin, with bases loaded and one out. And a big guy at the plate here. Yeah, you'd love to see a, a ground ball, hard ground ball here somewhere to be able to get out of this inning with minimal damage and damage control. That pitch could be outside for a ball, ball one. The corners are in. Graf's in at first. Cooper's in at third. Middle of the infield is back. Open for a double play. That one's going to be swung and missed. So count will even up to 1-1. One, one. It's Nielsen. Yeah, the reason the corners are in is because play at the plate to get the force at the plate from first and third. It's going to be up high 2-1 now to Nielsen. Yeah, Brady's wanting a new ball. I think he's got all the all the strikes out of that one. So give me another one. He'll toss it in, get a new one from uh, the umpire. Landon will give that back to him. Tommy, you as a pitcher, you could probably speak to this more than me. Uh, weigh in a little bit on the tendency of being kind of light, light-footed on that on that front foot of his that got hurt. Swinging a miss, two-two. Yeah, so you have a tendency not to want to. Not to want to put pressure on that. It's just your natural body's tendency not to want to put that. And so when you do, you can't follow through. Right. And meaning you can't push and follow through, and that's going to leave the ball high because your body's not going to be able to bend. That's going to be a foul ball. So it'll make two two. So if he has if he has a you know, I, I will, even if it's not injured, it's just it's been injured. Your body still has a tendency to favor it. And so all this is normal and natural that Brady's just going to have to kind of pitch through. But you're going to lose some velocity one, and you're going to leave the ball high because you're not going to be kind of whipped through the ball. That's going to be a swing and a miss to Nielsen. So good job there. Brady is getting the second out. That's a big out, Devin, because now the middle infield or the, the corners can move back. You can get in the out anywhere you need to with the bases loaded. That's a huge strikeout. Alex Wade's going to step in the left fielder now for George County. Yeah, huge out there. And the missing high played in, played in Brady, Brady's favor there. Uh, it kind of, I mean, 2-2 two, two count, good pitch to, to have a fastball or a curveball. First pitch is going to be down low to Wade, so it'll be 1-0. Yeah, and, then, and Nelson just, I mean, he saw that high high fastball, maybe thought it was breaking back in, but, but chased it. And as you said, big big pitch there for the tie. Here's a 1-0 pitch. We need an out. Ground ball here would be beautiful. That one's going to be fouled off 1-1. Hey, if you're listening in, let us know. We always love to hear from you. We appreciate you tuning in, whether you're listening on 
the portal or if you're you're watching our stream on Facebook or on our YouTube channel at PMHS Sports. Text us and let us know, 601-590-5950. 601-590-5950. Swing and a miss. One, two now to Wade. So that one after had a little, what, that one had a little behind little, it. A little zip on it. It was 84. So uh, after a disastrous start, Brady has pitched well. He's down to one strike here. See if we can get out of this. That one's going to be fouled into the first base dugout. So it will remain one, two. Wade way behind that fastball. Yeah, hopefully these past few batters are going to be a telltale sign. First first batter jitters are out of the way, and see if we can see how long we can roll tonight. He's already up to 26 pitches so far. Here's the 1-2 pitch. That's going to be down low for a ball, 2-2. Coach Tyler Smith is listening in and watching. Coach Corey Dorn. Mr. Dorn, roll tied to you, too. Here's the 2-2 now. Payoff pitch. Don't want to go full. Got nowhere to put him here. Here's the pitch. It's going to be inside. 3-2. Just missed him. Yeah. That, that almost got his kneecap. Yeah, I think that was a frog hair length away from, <laughs> from, from catching him. All right. So now, 3-2, two, two outs. Runners will be in motion. They don't mean anything if we can make a pitch here, though. But it definitely could be uh, meaningful if get a hit to the outfield. There they go. That one's going to be hit to the shortstop. Kyler's going to pick it up and going to drop it. Kyler's going to bobble it and not able to make the play. So that'll be a two. That's what that running start gets you there, Devin, is allowed what would have been just one one to score, allowed two runs to score. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was any miscommunication or what. Cooper was coming over in that scenario. I mean, I know shortstop has jurisdiction over the infield, especially the left side of the infield. But Cooper was coming over, and I thought, in my point of view, Cooper had a much better play to make on the ball. He was coming across at the ball and had more momentum, momentum carrying him to first base than Kyler did coming away from first base and having to go back. Um, but we can't hear it, of course, up here. And so, All right, they got the guy at first. They oh picked my. him off, and they throw the ball away. So Brady stepped off, snap throw to first, had the guy in motion. Morgan then threw the ball away into, into left center field, so it allowed the run to score from third. So now it's four to nothing, and it allows the runner to round second and get to third. So what was first and third now becomes third, and you got a four to nothing lead, three hits and three errors by the tide. It's just been completely ugly. Here yeah. early. Yeah, disastrous first inning here. Um, good good coaching there by, by third base coach. I mean, calling a, a delayed steal. I mean, a, kind of a delayed steal what we're, to get into a first and third situation and a rundown situation. And uh, Morgan mm -hmm. gave it up very quickly. And we had it. We just got to execute. So, Garrett Dixon's going to step in now. He's going to take the first pitch up. He'll be the first baseman. So, 1-0. Now with a runner at third. George County up 4 nothing here in the top of the first. Swing and a miss. Dixon, even the count at 1-1. One, one. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and what, what stinks the most, Tommy, is is, is Brady's kind of done what he needed to do after those first couple couple hits that got away from him. Yeah. Um, he settled in, you're right. He, he, he settled in. out of this right. several batters ago. So getting unwarranted stress on him. He did, I think, was a little ginger there the first couple of batters. He seems to have settled in. He's now in the mid-80s. Looks a little sharper, a little more movement. I see two on his fastball. Right. All good things. Here's the pitch. That's going to be down low, 2-2. Two -two. All this gives the George County faithful a lot to cheer about. They've got into the game here quite early as they brought quite a good crowd from Loosedale. Yeah, Pekin cool. has a good crowd, too. Quite the haul on a Tuesday night. That's right. Kudos to them. So here's a 2-2, two, two, two outs, runner at third. George County up 4 nothing. It's going to be fouled off. The count will remain 2-2. Two, two. A couple other folks listening in. Let me check in here. Ronnie Busby listening in, watching from Lakeland, Florida. Uh, Bobby and Tangy Franklin are from Dallas. Hey, guys, the Petersons listening in. It says roll tide. Go, Kyler. All right. Let's see if we can make another pitch here. 2-2. Two, two. Swing and foul. So count will remain 2-2. Two, two. You've got a pitch count on Brady. It's been quite a bit here early. We should have been out of it about 20 pitches ago, but where is he at right now? Can you see? Wait on it to refresh. 
right. Swing and a miss. So we get out of here finally, but not before. George County is going to score four. They do so on three hits, and they're helped by three errors. So we'll head to the bottom of the first. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Hey friends, camping is a spring thing, and Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune is here to get you started this spring. Whether it's RV accessories, parts, RV service, or RV sales, Pawpaw's Campers has you covered. Just call our toll-free line, 800-728-2267. That's 800-728-CAMP. Or go to our website at pawpawsniceprice.com. We're not that far from where you are. Come and see us today. Dr. Hermaine Almonte, Chair of Surgery and Trauma Medical Director, Highland Community Hospital. Over the last 10 years, the Highland Surgery Department have grown exponentially. We have been able to add multiple services to our surgery department, which includes urology, general surgery, advanced laparoscopic surgery, ENT, as well as ophthalmology. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. For more information, go to highlandch.com. Tommy Upton and Devin Hitchpath back here at the Kirk as the Tide has survived a disastrous first inning. As I said, three hits, four runs, and three errors by the Tide. We'll see if we can chip away at a lot of baseball left to play. No reason to freak out yet. Mr. Nielsen is on the mound. He's a big guy. We'll see what he has for the Tide. We saw him last year. Big, tall right-hander, about 6'3". Senior. Um, I know they have a pitcher that's committed to state and a pitcher that's committed to East Central, and I don't remember which one is which, but we'll see both of them this week. I want to also remind you that the first pitch of their innings brought to you by your hometown bank, FMB Picky. Well, they're Picky Maroon Tide Proud. Stop by the main branch at 121 East Canal Street for all your banking needs. Parker Helton's going to lead this thing off for the Tide here. Dug ourselves into a hole. We need to get some base runners here, Devin, and start chipping away. Yeah, Tommy, that's big important. That's that's the importance. We need chip away. Chip away, eliminate the big innings. Parker's gonna lift that one, but it's gonna be right at the shortstop. He'll drift back and make that play easily. So he saw one pitch, lifted it out into center field. And uh, with one out, nobody on, Kyler King's gonna step in. Nobody on. Shortstop. Yeah, I mean <laughs> he got the first pitch past the ball and just kind of I mean was behind it a little bit, but got under it just a tad to, I mean, I mean, it was going towards the right direction to right, left center field, but. That was going to be in there for a strike, 0-1. Yeah, starts to collar off with a breaking pitch. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's going to be down low for a ball, 1-1, now to Kyler. Yeah, a lot of baseball. Terrible inning, but a lot of baseball. No right. reason to freak just yet. We've proven that we can score some runs. I think we can hit this kid. He throws pretty well. Cotter's going to hit that one hard out into right field, but it's going to be right at the right fielder. So the ball hit pretty well, but right to somebody. So two outs now. Yeah, Jamie Lumpkin's going to step in for the tie. Seems like Kyler may have got it off the end of the bat a tad bit, but like you said, I mean, he squared it up, but hit it right to him. Coach Evans going to talk to Jamie a little bit, maybe give his defense some, some time to recuperate and uh, give Brady a little bit more time. And Brady had 36 pitches in that last inning, 24 strikes. That was the big key there. Yeah, way too many pitches should have been out of there. Jamie's going to swing and miss at the first one, so 0-1. Right, of, of, breaking pitch. of the four runs that were scored, only one was earned, Tommy. Yeah, that's terrible. But – we just got to get some base runners here. That's our job. Started off with Jamie. He's going to take that one in there for a strike. 0-2. Yeah, Nelson. Nielsen, I think. Nielsen? Nielsen. Yeah, uh, Nielsen. That's right. Nielsen. It's going to be a swing and a miss. Jamie's going to go down on strikes. They'll have to throw him out down at first. They do. So, after giving up four and having a pretty rough inning, Tide goes quietly in their half of the first. We're heading to the top of the second. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. 
Dr. Lori Blackmer and Dr. Mark Hutto at Picayune Eye Clinic are experienced optometrists who are passionate about your vision care. Picayune Eye Clinic will cater to all of your vision needs, answer any eye care questions you may have, and supply you with the most up-to-date optometric information and fashion eyewear and frames in order to keep your eyes clear and healthy. They've been providing complete eye care for over 30 years. The clinic is at 908 6th Avenue in Picayune. Give Picayune Eye Clinic a call today at 601-798-4182 and begin to see things more clearly. Dr. Lori Blackmer and Dr. Mark Hutto. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. We're back here at the Kirk where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, F&B Picayune. Place for all your banking needs. Ms. Susan Wilson and her staff are ready to service you at their North Picayune branch on Cooper Road just off of Attic 6. Go by and see Susan for a loan. Sometimes, Devin, when you have so many buttons to push, you push the wrong one. You ever uh, done that? Yeah. I do it to my wife quite often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that usually has a lot more ramifications, though. I, I mean, I can, you know, bring down the terror of carry on me, but maybe I won't mess it up too bad. Leading off here for George County in their top of the second. Designated hitter, Carson Pierce. He was hitting for Jacob Eubanks, shortstop. We'll see if we can have a little better inning than we did in the first. Todd gave up four. Only one of those were earned, three hits and three airs. Here's Brady's first pitch to Pierce. That's going to be hit out into right field. Brunson's going to go over and make the catch. So ball hit pretty hard, honestly, but right at Brunson. Brunson yep. I mean, we've talked about it already. I mean, missing high. And so this, this George County team, they can hit high fastballs. They've, they've, they've said they've made sure of that. They've, they've hit four of them pretty decently. Um, and so Brady needs to work down. And I, I, as you mentioned, it's – it's probably a tendency to, to miss high when you when you injure that foot because you can't push off and you can't get low in the zone. But it needs to work and stay low in the zone here so we flip back to the top of the lineup. Ben Davis will take the first pitch in there for a strike. Oh yeah, one called a strike. Good frame job there by by Watts. Ball seemed to be a little bit outside, but he brought it back in. That one's going to be fouled off. So O oh, two now to the leadoff hitter Davis. He single to start this thing off. Last inning. Yeah, he singled on a breaking pitch to right field. Just went right in the four hole, and he just got his hands around to it. But 0-2, we don't need anything near the, near the strike zone here. Is the 0-2 pitch going to stay up high? Not a terrible 0-2 pitch. Couldn't get Mr. Davis to go fishing up there. So we want to. Yeah, Watts called for that one up high. Here's the one-two pitch. Robertson, that's going to be fouled off the third base side, so it will remain one-two. A warm and muggy night here at the Kirk. The air conditioner is doing all it can do, but we've got all the windows open, and it's not helping, quite honestly. Yeah, it's going right over our heads and out that window right. very quick. Here's the one-two. It's going to be 58-footer, so two-two now to Davis. Brady tries to get him to go fishing after a breaking pitch. Tommy, sometimes Landon throws that pitch back to the pitcher. I mean, oh, throws that ball <laughs> back to the pitcher harder than the pitcher threw it to him. <laughs> That's right. And usually when it's a bouncer, like, don't do that anymore. That's right. It's usually when you get a catcher aggravated at you. Here's a 2-2 from Brady. That one's going to be hit out into left center field, and that's going to be extra bases. Stockstill's going to get over there and get it, but not before Davis is going to be standing at second with a double. Again, ball not hit terribly hard, but hit in a great spot. He hit the first one out to right field. That one to the left center and standing on second base. Yeah, Davis, son, son of, their, of their head coach, Tim Davis. Oh, I'm sorry. Their head coach. Uh, Brandon Davis. Brandon Davis. I was trying to find the name on their lineup. Uh, head coach Brandon Davis. That would be his, his son, Ben. I mean, but – Great piece of hitting pass two at bats. I mean, just letting his hands do the work at the, in the in the batter's box. 
Catcher now, Blaine Green, steps in here. First pitch is going to be down low to him, 1-0. So good job of hitting, really, by George County, the first one and a third. Pickens going to have to match it. Looks like we're going to have to score with him. Somebody will have to go for two at some point. That one's going to be a swing and a miss, 1-1 one, one, to Green. Yeah, Had Green. a little bit of sprinkle hit. I was saying Green single to the right side last at bat. He was, he was one of the first three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back singles in the first inning. That one's going to be down low 2-1 now to Green. Had a little bit of a sprinkle early. Not much. Just enough to make you get your umbrella out. Now it's just a little bit of like fog rolling in. So if you see it's a little cloudy on the stream, it's just a foggy, yucky. A lot of humility in the air tonight. Here's a 2-1, going to be down low for a ball. 3-1 now to Green. One out. Davis stands at second after a double. George County leads this one 4 to nothing here, top of the second. It's going to be a swing and a miss. Good pitch there by Brady. 3-2 now. Yeah, it'd be pretty big if Brady can work back here and come back from a uh, – was it 3-0 or just 3-1? 3-1. Just 3-1, yeah. Just work back here and, and keep this batter at bay and, and move on to the next. He's a pitch. That's going to be up high for a ball. So we've got runners at first and second now. Gage Reeves. Yeah, Reeves hit, hit, the, hit the harder of the three three singles last, uh, last time up. He hit it to center field and um, – very similar scenario other other than the one out, but similar scenario when he came up to bat last time, uh, hit the ball to center field. Third base coach was holding the runner at third, but then sent him on the bobbled, bobbled ball by, by center fielder and ended up scoring. Brady's going to spin around, run Davis back to first. Reeves is playing center field tonight. I believe he is the second pitcher probably who we will see Friday night. Right-handed hitter is going to take this one from Brady and pop it straight up, but it's going to get out of play. It's probably going to come right back to us. Oh, it's in the stands out in front of us, a few rows down from the press box. Scatters the George County faithful. So Reeves will step back in there, 0-1. Tommy, looks like we may have another little sprinkle. Getting a little some, sprinkle. My camera's getting wet. Yep, yeah, some folks are getting their umbrellas out here in the stands. Hopefully it won't be too bad. Doesn't, be, doesn't look to be hard, just enough to kind of aggravate you, quite honestly. Here's the 0-1 pitch. That's going to be in there for a called strike. 1-1. I'm sorry, 0-2. Yeah, great great <coughs> frame job there by, by Watts. He, I think he kind of got that one for his pitcher. Brady comes set. Here's the pitch. Reeves, that one's going to be hit hard and high. I think it's going to get out of play over there. No, Bermuda Triangle. It did not get out of play, Tommy. No, nobody could get to it? Nobody could get to it. It's a never, never land down there by Kirk Corner. Down the left field line. Cooper was going over. Kyler was going over. Justin was going over. Just nobody could get there. So everybody will get back to their positions. Brady will get a fresh ball. and We'll do it again here, 0-2, to the center field of Reeves. Swing and a foul. Just got a piece of a pretty good breaking pitch to stay alive. That was a good pitch there by Brady. He was trying to strike him out. Yeah, that was that was a really good pitch. I mean, I thought he had him. I mean, threw that curveball. And Brady's delivery as well on a lot of times pitchers can show their pitches on what they're going to throw. Brady's fastball release point and his curveball release point are very, very similar. Here's the 0-2 here to Reese. Swing and a miss. Foul tip, but it went into the glove. So, same result. Strikeout by Reeves, and that's big. That's going to bring to the plate Kaylor Havard. Third baseman. He'll step in with two on, two outs. Here in the top of the second. George County leading 4 nothing. That one's going to be inside for a ball, 1-0. 
Tyler Penton said it's raining good up in Carrier. So uh, maybe it doesn't come down here. We might have to send you to fetch some cameras if that happens. We'll have, we'll have a one camera show tonight if that's the case. Let's hope it does it. Here's the 1 0 pitch to Haver. That one's going to be hit on the ground to Kyler. He'll pick it up, throw over to Jamie, and we'll retire the second out of the inning. So, got some base runners, but tied able to get out of this one with no damage. We're heading to the bottom of the second. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Locally owned and operated, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune would like to say a huge thank you to their loyal customers. Both locations, Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4, now have new hours. 7.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. and 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Sundays at the Highway 43 location. Get the early bird special Monday through Thursday. Remember, when it comes to your vehicle shine, First Place Express Car Wash in Picayune will have you saying, if it doesn't shine, it ain't mine. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a speed bump. And if you have cut rate car insurance, the cost to reattach your muffler could hurt. So switch to Allstate, save money, and be better protected from mayhem like me. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Based on coverage and limits selected, subject to terms, conditions, and availability. In most states, prices vary based on how you buy. All state bar and casualty insurance company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. We're back here at the Kirk, headed to the bottom of the second. George County leads this one two, four to nothing here. I want to remind you that the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FMB Picayune, where they always put you first. Stop by the South Branch and see Miss Tracy Acker on Memorial Boulevard for all of your banking needs. All right, Morgan Krause going to lead off here for the Tide. Big first baseman, dual sport commit to Pearl River Community College. He'll be vying for the place kicking job and also spot on the baseball team. We need a base hit here from him. That's going to be, curveball's going to be in there for a strike 0-1 to Kraft. Yeah, Tommy, it seems like Nielsen, I mean, as big as he is, you think he'd be overpowering right now, but he's, he's only dropping in the 75, 77 mile an hour curveballs, and that one came in at 83. Looked like a fastball. I, I would assume it to be a fastball. Um, yeah, I'd say he's mid 80s or so, and but he got a big breaking pitch. You're big, right, big breaking pitch. Here's the 02 now to Kraft. That one's going to be fouled off. Another breaking pitch to Morgan. That Kraft gets a piece up, fouls it off. Yeah, we just we got to be real disciplined here. Um, I mean, we need we need every base runner we can so we can chip away. I mean. You'd love to chip away one one to two each inning. I mean, or if not each inning, every other inning. And yeah, we'd take three pack. Take one at this point. That's right. Just get a base runner. That's what we need. Here's the 0-2 to Morgan. That's going to be hit hard, but right, right. at the center fielder. It's going to get down. down. Past him too. Going to get down. He kind of tried to make a dive and play. Morgan's going to come around second. He's going to try for three. He runs like a kicker, but in this case, it didn't matter. Went all the way to the fence. And that's going to be a stand-up triple for Morgan, and that's exactly what we needed right there, Devin. Yeah, that was big. That was big. I mean, he hit the ball on the money, and the center fielder, center fielder gambled. He gambled for a diving play. Uh, would, have, would have had to been an ESPN top ten play to, to make that play, but um, he gambled and, and lost, and tied won that gamble. Landon Watts now is going to step in. He's been red hot for the tide. See what he can do here. With a runner at third, his team down four to nothing. First pitch is going to be in there for a strike. Oh, one. That's a good breaking pitch there. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's not a 12-6, but it has a major 12-6 loop to it coming from that three-quarter slot. Here's the one. Another one. Watts is going to hit this one on the ground to the shortstop. He's going to boot it. So Watts will reach on an air. Morgan will come in to score. That was fairly routine out there. Just couldn't corral it. Yeah, I don't know if the pressure of be playing in got to the shortstop or whatever, but um, but a really good job there. Runner at third, you want to hit the ball on the ground. Yes, you want it to the right side, of course, but you want to hit the ball on the ground as when the offensive philosophy there is to hit the ball on the ground, you apply pressure because the fielder has to make three things. He has to, has to make the catch, 
has to make the throw, and the first baseman has to make a make the catch. And uh, good job there by Watson doing his job, and quick throw over there by by Nielsen. Yeah, they try to. Who do we get as a pinch runner there, Tommy? That's Ian Heron's going to come in, and Cooper Rowe's going to be the batter. So Ian Heron will come in and hit for the catcher. I'm sorry, for, he'll be running for the catcher, and they're throwing over there again. Poor Ian can't get a lead. Nielsen is on him already. So that's two. Tosses over there, and had Ian got his jersey dirty already. Yeah, that, that last one was – I caught him about more surprised than the first one did <laughs> because I'm, I'm glad that, glad that Nielsen kind of threw it to the first baseman's left side because I, it would have been close. So Cooper Murrow, the third baseman, will step in here. Here's the first pitch to him. He's going to be up high for a ball, 1-0. And that one registered at 84. I think that was the hardest one we've had tonight by Nielsen. Here's the 1-0. That's going to be fouled off 1-1 now to Cooper. Justin Stock still listening in, watching the stream. We appreciate all you guys watching and listening. Appreciate the support. We always love to hear from you. 601-590-5950. There's another throw over to Ian. Got about a three-and-a-half-foot lead, so I'm not sure why. Nielsen is so interested, but he is he is trying to keep him close. The umpire has said something to him twice. I'm not sure what he is saying to him, if he's trying to quick pitch or what, but he's said something to Nielsen twice. Here's the 1-0. -oh. That's going to be hit on the ground to second base, and the second base was going to bobble it and not get the throw over to first. So, again, the ball not hit hard, Devin, but second base just couldn't, couldn't get the ball out of the dirt. Cooper's able to beat it out. Yeah, I mean, you, you hit the ball on the ground a, more times than not in high-pressure situations. I mean, you think it's not that high-pressure, but hitting the ball on the ground is a lot harder making out than hitting the ball in the air. It's going to bring up Landon Franklin, designated hitter for Picayune. He'll be hitting for um, Brady tonight. He'll step in with two on, nobody out, tied down 4 nothing here in the bottom of the second. That one's going to be fouled off by Frank. Over the right side, big spot for Landon. He is is uh, we've talked about it a couple different times. His average isn't where he would want it to be, right? But he seems to be on base and, and kind of in the middle of the stuff all year long, and that's really what you want. If you're scuffling a bit with getting base hits, and then just get in there and grind, and that's what he's done for sure. And you can kind of tell by his at bat right now where he, he, the way his stance is, he's got his bat on his just on his shoulder. That one's going to be chopped, but mm, just, just foul. foul down the right field line. That one would have been over the head of the first baseman. Yeah. But kind of, just foul. What I was alluding to is it looks like he may have simplified his swing. Um, looks like his stance in the box. He's he's not as not as spread out as he used to be. His hands aren't back. His bat is literally resting on his shoulder just so he can get to the ball as quick as possible. And uh, you simple <clears throat> when you hitting is already hard enough. When when you complicate it, it gets even harder. Here's the O2. That's going to be just high. Whew. George County is. Making a ruckus, I would say it was close, but I do believe it was a ball. One, two to Frank. Yeah, I agree. Catcher did a good job there by catching it deep. You catch those high looping curveballs deep as a catcher. That was going to be up high fastball. Two, two now. So Landon has worked the count back at least even after going down 0-2. It would be really big right here if Landon can just move these runners over. Anything on the right side would be right would be huge. That one's going to be hit on the right side, but it may be two. No, it bounces off the second baseman. Wow. That's a tailor-made double play right at the second baseman. And the ball kind of took a little bit of a hop at the last minute. And there's another air. Tommy, and I'll take this time as, as the airhead coach is going out and talk to the infield, but the time that ball hit, it looked like it hit right on the lip. I mean, as, as well-groomed as this field is, Coach Evan Nicholson puts in a lot, a lot of time to groom this infield. And, it's one of the, I mean, in my opinion, other other than a turf infield, I mean, it's one of the pristine infields that that I've seen in in the Gulf Coast. And but man, there's always a lip between grass and dirt, and that ball found it and just ate ate the second baseman up. Well, we need a little bit of little bit of luck. Maybe this is our luck. We got bases loaded here, nobody out. Tied has scored one so far. Brunson Stockstill is gonna. Step in here with George County coach, Mr. Davis, has went out to talk to his pitcher, Andrew Nielsen. It's not really. I think this is more of a gather up the infield and talk to them more than the pitcher, quite honestly, as he's kind of going around the horn and maybe giving them the business a little bit. As they have made a couple of errors here. 
in this inning. So that will load up the bases. As I said, for Brunson, Stocks will step in here now. No changes by George County. Let's we'll see what they do. It looks like the corners are going to come in. Well, I say they're going to play even with the back. I thought they were going to come in. They're going to play even with the back here with nobody out. Ian Heron's down at third. Swing and a miss there by Brunson. Who's that at second? Cooper? Yeah, Cooper's at second, and Franklin's down at first. Rain coming in a little bit harder. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get you to retrieve some cameras. Swing and a miss there by Brunson 02. So if you're watching the stream, you may get a single camera game tonight. I have one up in the in the booth with us. It's not getting wet, but may not get those base shots. Sorry about that. Hopefully we get them out of the rain and we can use them again on another night. One two to Brunson as that ball stays up high. Here's the pitch. That one's going to stay up high. Two two. Like the rain's coming in pretty good. Tyler Penton, I think, was right. Well, it may be slacking off from what I just looked at a second ago, but it's still coming in. But it looked the forecast when we looked at it in between innings, it looked like one little sail was crossing the way. We'll, we'll see how long it lasts. Here's the one-two. Bases loaded. Tied trailing 4-1. That's going to be outside. 3-2. So Brunson goes 0-2 quickly, then three balls. Nielsen's trying to nibble. George County doesn't like it, but I believe those were all three balls. They were close, but they were all three balls. I believe it, too. So it's a full up here. That's going to be outside. Not even close there. So that'll walk in a run. Yeah. Good good discipline there at the plate by Brunson Stock. So he got down 0-2. Um, and just like you, as we said, those those past three pitches before the last one were, were very close, but good discipline there by not chasing anything out of the zone and knowing, knowing the position he was in with bases loaded and how critical – Critical that second run <clears throat> that second run was. Justin Stocks will step in here now. Base is still loaded, nobody out. That one's going to be fouled off. Stocks was all over that fastball. Just fouled it off over the third base dugout here. So Yeah, he just missed it. He was he was ready for that first pitch fastball, and uh, like you said, he was all over it, but just missed it. Here's the 0-1. That's going to be in there for a strike. Good pitch, 0-2. Stocks has got itself in a hole now. Probably start seeing some breaking pitches. Although they can be susceptible to a pass ball. Green's done a good job so far. That one's going to be outside. One, two. Try to get Stocks to go fishing. About six inches off the plate. He does not. So he'll get a one, two pitch. That one's going to be lifted out into center field. Should be infield fly fly. rule. And the umpire does call it, infield fly rule. So um, one out as a shortstop makes the uh, catch. Ball lifted into shallow center field. That will turn the, the lineup over to Parker Helton, leadoff hitter. Bases are still loaded. Now we got one out tied trailing 4-2 here in the bottom of the second. Here's a pitch to Helton. That one's going to be fouled off, 0-1, 86 there on the gun. Yeah, I think that's the hardest we've seen tonight by Nielsen. Tommy, is Parker the one that has the little bat in your eyes? He does. He carries a 24-inch <laughs> bat up to the plate. Such a tall, long kid, and I know it's not, but looks like about a 24-inch bat. That one's going to be up, up uh, high for a ball, 1-0, and then he'll choke up on it and make it an 18-inch bat. I don't see how he hits anything, but he, he swings it well. We need him to swing it well right here. That's right. That one's going to be hit hard right at the second base, and he made an outstanding play. Throw it over to first, and it's off the bag. Off the bag at first. So good play there by the second baseman as he caught the hardest ball, hit to him all night long, throwed it to the shortstop. Shortstop's going to try to turn a double play, but the, the, the uh, throw is not good. First baseman comes off the bag. So, I mean, I, Parker was getting down that line so fast. I think he would have beat that ball out, whether or not the. I mean, it did pull him off the bag, but I think I think he would have beat it out. Way. That's right. Kyler King's going to step in here now, first and third, two down. Tied have chipped away. Got got the lead now down to one, four to three here in the second. That's part of the maturity of this team. Is I don't That's think right. I don't think we get too freaked out one way or the other. 
That's right. Especially early in the game. These guys have been, been to war for several years here, so they're not going to get too afraid of anything. Here's a pitch to King. That one's going to be up high for a ball. Nilsson is running those calls. He's kind of he's all, animated. He's also very quick. I mean, if you're supposed to pause, that pause is very, very short when he gets completely set as a pitcher. Um, yeah, he's going to step off here and take a walk around the mound as he's a little frustrated. Right. He had a seven-pitch first inning and uh, has worked his way up to 35 pitches this in this inning here. Let's see if we can get a few more, maybe another run or two before we get out of here. He'll throw over the first. Not close as Parker is back. Yeah, Parker hit that ball on the nose, one hop to second baseman. He made a good play, made a good turn to the shortstop. Shortstop just couldn't get a good solid throw to first, pulled the first baseman off. That one's going to be inside. No, oh, ball from wow. Strike. Almost hit uh, King. He actually looked at his arm to see if it did hit him. Umpire said that was close enough, so 1-1 one, one. to King. He's going to hit here. Another throw over to first. That one's going to be really close there, Parker. He's, Parker he's, got, a, he's got a great pick move, Tommy. I will, I will give that to him for sure. He does, and he's not afraid to use it. That one was close, but helping got back. Still got first and third, two outs. 1-1. One, one. Here's the pitch to King. It's going to stay up high, 2-1. I think you and I both agree. Should be 3-0, but 2-1 nonetheless. Yeah, Let's see I'm if, hoping that, that King can get a pitch here to hit. Oh, yeah, that's right. I would love to see him drive one into one of the alleys. That's going to be the old first to third move. And that is, should be a ball. That's a ball. That is a ball. Okay, so that was a late call ball. I don't know who called it, but it was a not a good move. It was a little, little fumbly, and so he's going to try attempt a first to third, but it looked like he kind of fell forward first right. in his that, first to third it, move. Exactly. Describe that, that for us. For, for y'all that are, for people that are confused, so that <clears throat> the pitcher, when he makes so it's all, balks are, are judgmental calls, but when a pitcher makes a right-handed pitcher, they can do first to third moves. That means they can lift their leg up, fake like they're going to pick the third, and then turn around and fake like they're going to throw the third, or I mean back to first, or even throw it. But if their if their weight or their um, view from the umpire makes it seem like they are leaning or going towards home plate, then they have to go to the home plate. And if they pick on that judgment view from the umpire, then it is a ball. And so based off and, – and clearly uh, Coach Evan thought it as well as we did up here, that it was very, very close and borderline, and the umpire saw the same thing we saw and that they're discussing it right now. Um, yeah, they called it a balk. I don't know who called it. Nobody the, was animated. The, no, the, need, no umpire was animated. Right. But they called it a balk, so that would have that mean we run the, scored. The field umpire called it. Okay. Uh, eventually, but it was like as we discussed, it was very delayed. Now they're together, and so having a hoo ha, and sometimes that doesn't go in our favor. I believe Coach Evan will lose his mind if and if it goes in the other favor. Yeah, so he, he his demeanor when he went over to talk to Coach Evan is not good if you're a Picayune fan. Oh, yeah. Evan is about to – I mean, he's he's very animated right now to the umpire coming yeah. back and describing his view. Yeah, he's, he's, he's depicting it. He's replaying it in his mind and saying you can't go towards home if you are, you know, going to make the pickoff play. Can't do it. So that that means they're going to put this runner. I mean, I got some good thing I got to undo on this program. So let me put him back at second and first. So, Tommy, the umpire – Going to Evan, he didn't make a call. Yeah. Unless he was going to tell him to put his runner back on, but he didn't make any signal, uh, an animated signal to either put him back on and pointing back to the bag or not. But Evan seems to be disagreeing. I think yeah. we can tell that. But uh, I, th I think that what's going to happen is we're going to go back to first and third, 2 1 count and 4 to 3 as opposed to tie ball game. So, go. Coach uh, Nicholson is still pleading his case yeah. now to both umpires. Rightfully so, because I, I think, I mean, if, yeah, you can't if change the field, if the field umpire calls the balk. You can't get overridden, yeah. I mean, how can the home plate umpire override the balk that was, yeah. I mean, because with it being based on a judgmental call, that's, that's right. the big thing. Tommy. That's right. He's still pleading his case. He have, He's replayed it for him four or five times. I don't think they're buying it. Um, so the end result wow. is they're going to put him – Back at first. Is that what they're going to do? Yeah, well, now we got the field umpire going to the George County 
I mean, Tommy, is he asking which co- what <laughs> yeah. coach wants which yeah. one that wants to do what? Yeah, I'm not sure. Make a call and let's just move forward at this point. Somebody's going to be mad. Actually, right. 50% of the fans are going to be mad. So, so um, what so is what You is can it? see that, that coach, now the George coach, County fan, uh, coach, he's not happy, so I'm not sure what. Right. Coach Davis Coach Davis is being animated because he I could you can see by his quote unquote sign language that he was saying you have to be animated, put both hands in the air, call it. So it seems like the call may stand. Well I think here's what they're gonna do. Here, here's why Coach Davis would be animated is if they they said no balk, but they allow the runners to move because the runners moved up and I think that's what Coach Davis is upset about oh, is wow. you have to call a ball. Right and so. so they're not going to allow the they're not going to allow the runners to go back. Coach Davis is probably going to get thrown out here, and I don't blame him. I don't quite blame honestly. him at all. I don't, yeah, I don't blame him because you can't do this. Make a call and stick with it. Everybody's human, and you miss the call, but you can't go back and forth and back and forth, and that's where umpires, I think, get in trouble. Yeah, the, so, ha- so the hat's Coach, off now. Yeah, and Coach Davis, is he's going to get his money worth. He's been told to go back to the dugout, and we'll see if he does. He does. Okay. So I think we're going to go back here. I, 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 they did not make the runner go back. So we now have a tie ball game. Wow. The count is 2 1, two outs. I don't understand how you cannot call that a balk. I also don't understand how, you, if you didn't call it a balk, you allow the runners to score and you don't put them back. So we got 4 4, 2 1, two outs, runner at second. Here's the pitch to Keen. Swing and a miss. Wow. 2 2. That's probably pretty, one pretty of the most u- yeah, unique uh, calls that I've been a part of. I've, I've played, coached, and watched and called some baseball in my life, but that's one of the that's one of the weird ones. 2-2. Two, two. It's going to be hit on the ground to second. Second baseman's going to pick it up, toss it over to first, and retire the inning. So after an eventful bottom of the second inning, Ty chipped away. They scored four there. They were helped by a couple of errors. We head to the top of the third. We got a tie ball game. You're listening to Maroon Tie Baseball on WRJW. Join the crispy chicken craze with Sonic's all new crispy tender wraps and hickory barbecue and cheesy Baja. Stop by and enjoy each for only $1.99. Sonic's crispy tender wraps include all white meat, melted shredded cheddar cheese, and lettuce. The hickory barbecue has additional hickory sauce, and the cheesy Baja has an added zesty cheese sauce, and both are wrapped in a warm tortilla. Try one today at Sonic Drive In on Highway 11 North in Picayune. Go ahead, push that red button for happy eating at its best. When you wake up with an aching back or sore neck, Dr. Debbie Moore with Moore Chiropractic Clinic suggests you consider making simple changes in your sleeping position to alleviate unnecessary strain on your body. According to the American Chiropractic Association and Dr. Debbie Moore, it's best to sleep on your back or side because laying on your back or side allows your head, neck, and spine to relax into their natural alignment. This will help you wake up pain-free and feeling rejuvenated. Moore Chiropractic Clinic, we've got your back. Well, we were looking for some action, and we got it in the bottom of the second. We'll see what the third holds here. we got a top ball game. I want to remind you here at the Kirk that every pitch, every first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune, where hometown means the best service around with four locations in Picayune to serve you. Devin, I tried to describe that one as best I could, but I don't know that I accurately described it. It was a mess, quite honestly. Yeah, I don't, Tommy, I don't think there is an accurate way to describe that. Trip, Trip Lightsey is going to lead this off. Because you ask one coach if it's accurate, and you ask the next coach if it's accurate, but it looks like they're both talking and agreeing maybe on on the absurd call that was made. But nonetheless, new uh, ball game, Tommy. Here's the right fielder. He'll hit the top of the third. First pitch going to be up high ball one. How many pitches for Brady so far? Got to believe he's probably I think close. He was at, I think he was at 56. Okay. Yep, that was pitch number 56 right there. It actually looks pretty good. Looks pretty comfortable. I think he struggled a bit. That's going to be in there for a strike, 1-1. One, one. I think he struggled a bit the first two two batters or three batters, but he, he, at least visually he looks pretty good right now. That right. one's going to be lifted up. Brady's going to move over. Morgan's going to come over and make the play. That'll be a pop out to Morgan. We will retire Lightsey. 
Tell me, how's your other cameras look over there? Well, they got a little see. glossy on let's them. Let's see. Actually, they don't look terrible. Flip through here. Not, not terrible. So we'll leave them. We get them. I was more worried about rain ruining them than yeah. I had. It's not really raining hard enough. Pitcher now, Andrew Nielsen's going to step in with nobody on and one out. Yes, he did. Yep. Yeah, he tried to hold back on that swing. Didn't yeah. didn't quite make it. He fanned at the first breaking pitch. Oh, one. We'll have a Sonic player of the game, and we're going to have a Paul's Pastry Shop trivia question here coming up in a couple of innings. Devin's got a doozy. He'll read to you here in a second. That's going to be hit in the hole between shortstop and second. Ball was hit pretty well right by uh, the third baseman. So he'll stand it first now. Nielsen will. One out. That'll bring up the left fielder, Alex Wade. That's going to draw a – looks like probably a pitch and change. I'm thinking that we're at a pitch count for Brady. So it looks like the skip's going to come out and get Brady. When he does, we'll step aside – for a word from PRCC. Pearl River Community College has been providing a quality education to the people of South Mississippi and beyond for the past 110 years. If you or a family member is an alumnus of this great institution, we invite you to support future PRCC students through the PRCC Foundation Scholarship Program. Honor or memorialize a loved one or identify your support for the college by creating a scholarship through the PRCC Foundation with your tax-deductible financial gift. Call Delana Harris with the PRCC Foundation Office at 601 601- 403-1191 and make a financial investment in a young person's future at Pearl River Community College. Pit Lane Oil Change in Picayune is your personal pit crew. When you need an oil change, take it to the professionals who will make sure your oil change is done right with quality oils from Pennzoil, Castrol, Mobile One, and Rotella by Shell. At Pit Lane Oil Change, it's not just an oil change. We inspect under the hood to make sure all your fluid levels are where they should be and those belts are in good working order. Our Pit Lane crew ensures those air filters are not clogged up and hurting your engine's performance. We will also vacuum the inside of your vehicle. At Pit Lane Oil Change, our crew also inspects your wipers, all your bulbs to make sure those brake lights and turn lights are working correctly, and we put all your tires at the right pressure. Why just get an oil change when your vehicle can get the pampered professional service that only the Pit Lane Oil Change crew can deliver? We're at 401 Highway 11 North, just three blocks north of East Canal, right by the railroad tracks. No need for an appointment, but if you are on a schedule, call us at 601-798-0017. Pit Lane Oil Change, your personal pit crew. Tommy Upton here with Devin Hedgepath back at the Kirk. As we are in the top of the third. Got a runner on first, and we have a pitching change. Porter, Landon Watts will come in from catching. He'll swap over and start uh, pitching now for the Tide as he relieves Brady Robinson, who was on a pitch count first game of the year. He's back from injury. I, I would, How would you assess his his outing tonight, his physical shape, what, what would you say about him, Devin? Well, Tommy, I, I'd assess it with a positive note. I mean, it, it's it's a positive outlook. Uh, great to see him back first and foremost. But but other than those first few blemishes, um, Tommy, I mean, he was, he was himself. I mean, other than a few miles an hour short, miles per hour short on the radar gun for his fastball, uh, and that, that'll come with time to getting that back, getting back in good physical shape. Um, only thing I really did see is it was he was kind of when he went to cover the bag there for Morgan in that first out of this inning. Um, it seems like he was a little little light footed on that on that injured foot, but other than that, man, from the mound, once he got past those three three batters, um, he settled in and and he made opportunities for his defense to do the work. But, Alex uh, Wade's going to step in now for. George County take the first pitch in there for a ball. Yeah, I would agree. I would say that a little tender probably, but overall I would say it's a pretty good pitching performance, not the best defensive performance by the Tide. That one's going to be inside for a ball 1-1, but a pretty good pitching performance, and, and I think the, the future is bright based on uh, that performance. We can slowly work him in over the next few weeks. And it's going to throw that one by Wade up high, 1-2, mid-80s. Landon comes in, slinging the big right-hander. That one's going to be bunted down the third baseline, but it's going to be foul. So count will remain 1-2. 
So if you just joined us, you missed an eventful bottom of the second inning. Picayune scores four. There is a little drama, but I don't understand how we ended up with uh, with both coaches mad. Now that was that was a bunt that was foul that should be an out, and they're not calling it. Okay, okay, they're right. Now they're calling it. So he bunted it with two strikes, and it was a foul ball, and that was an out. So they had they, to be reminded. I guess. About this, but it's but it's one two, and you foul the ball off on your bunt, and when you foul it off on a second strike or the third strike, and that's an out. Coach is going to not give too much of a discussion to the umpire. I, mean, I guess. Two outs. I guess the only call. I mean, the only concern that the coach had maybe he missed a, a strike call because this okay. umpire does kind of give a delayed strike call a little bit and so well, it was on not, the board so i know the right, board, i know the sure. board is not official but it was on the board garrett dixon will step into first baseman now still got a runner at first two outs tie ball game here in the second and third i'm sorry it's going to be a good breaking pitch in there oh one yeah I, that's the only thing i can think of there wasn't much of a debate you got an explanation from the home plate uh umpire and went back it's going to be a throw over from what first but but I'm with you. I mean, that's a pretty basic rule that you've played with since Little League, that you bunt with two strikes, it's an out. That's going to be a no pitch. No pitch. He's going to call a no, balk. Call he didn't call a set. He's got a quick pitch. So Landon will give up a balk there, move the runner down to second. And you got to come completely set. Yep. And that Landon works quick. He, If not the quickest on the team. Um, He's right there with him. So one, that one's going to be in there for a strike. 0-2, 86 there on the gun. So yeah, Landon works with a lot of passion. Sometimes that passion gets him in a little trouble, but that one he just sped it up too much. Here's the 0-2 swing and a miss. Swing and a miss. So Landon comes in, strikes out Wade and Dixon. We're going to head to the bottom of the third. We got a tie ball game. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Get back in the game with Don Therapy Center. Jamison Don has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, hypomat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. Hey neighbors, it's that time of year again. It's springtime. Make that short drive to Pawpaw's Campers in Picayune. You'll be glad you did. Pawpaw's has a nice selection of new and used trailers, fifth wheels, and motorhomes. Please go to our website, pawpawsniceprice.com, and see multiple pictures of our entire inventory. Pawpaw's Campers, having fun, selling fun. We're back here at the Kirk. Tommy Upton along with Devin Hedgepath, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picky. Right, Checking, savings, loans, mortgages. If you need it, they've got it. FNB Picky, your hometown bank. Jamie Lumpkin's going to step in here in the third. The tie ball game, four to four. Mr. Nielsen still on the mound for George County. That first pitch is going to be lifted out into right field, but I believe it's going to be playable. Right field will move over and make the play. So. Ball just kind of lifted out there, not very deep, not very hard. One pitch, one out. Morgan Kraft will step in now for the tie. And Morgan's one that kick-started the last, he let off last inning to kick-start the uh, four-run inning. He hit a hard, hard ball into the center field. The center fielder gambled on it, dove, and he ended up with a triple. I'll take another. Thank you, sir. First pitch is going to be down low to Morgan, 1-0. That one's going to be outside, 2-0. Two, the first baseman. Pick you. Nielsen's going to request another ball. That one skipped the plate. Sure got dirty and wet. Rain looks like it has stopped, but still pretty wet out there. Way outside, 3-0 now to Kraft. Muggy, nasty, hot night 
here at the Kirk. Been a pretty good ball game so far. A little sloppy. Yes. That one's going to be the 3 0 strike right down sloppy the middle, and, 3 1. Sloppy and drawn out. <laughs> First two <laughs> innings. I mean, I'm looking at my watch. It's already 8 8 13. It'll be an overtime here for much longer. That one's going to be outside. I had to wait because I don't see a don't see a, a big animation from this umpire, so I had to make sure what he was going to call it. But it was outside. So now we got a runner at first, one out. Pitcher now, Landon Watts is going to step in. Big spot here for Watts to help himself. He's going to swing and miss at a breaking pitch. Remember, Watts hit a mammoth home run last year at George County. Yep. Last time up, he reached on an error by the shortstop. This is going to throw that over the first. Not close. As Kraft only had a few feet of a lead over there. This one will come set here, and that one's going to be down low for a ball, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I think it, I think it would take a lot to 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 advance uh, Morgan over to second. Yeah, he, he runs like a place kicker, and that's okay. His job is not to steal bases. That's right. Here's the one-one. That's going to be outside two-one. Yeah, I kind of giggled on his on his triple last inning. Um, Evan was waving and waving and waving, and then right before, <clears throat> right as the ball was coming in, he realized that Morgan was. Was actually Morgan running, and and I think anybody else on the team would have had a chance at a inside the park home run, but nonetheless, yeah, Morgan I can't it. say anything. I don't know if I could have made it the first. <laughs> <laughs> so he's doing better than me, but he's for definitely sure, not sure. fleet of foot. Like, but as I said, that's not what we pay him to do. We pay him to drive in runs. That one's going to be fouled off. Two two. Good or bad here by Watts. Watts is all over that pitch here. See if he gets a breaking pitch here, 2-2, or if he gets a fastball, he can't yeah, lose it. That one's going to be lifted out into right, but I think it's going to be playable. And the right fielder will settle under it out there as Lightsey records his second out of the inning. So that'll bring up the third baseman, Cooper Moreau. So he'll hit with a one on here in the third. Cooper, tie ball game. Yeah, Cooper's been hot as of late, uh, as of quite a few tiesmen here uh, in this first six of their lineup. I mean, see if he can keep it going and do it with two outs. I know we've talked about it throughout the season, just two outs hitting and see if Ty can keep it going here. That was going to be inside the Coop, 1-0. I thought that ball was about to hit him, Tommy. Yeah, he turned and tried to let it get a piece, but just didn't quite get there to the left-handed hitting third baseman. That one's going to be hit hard. What a good play by the wow. second baseman. And he's going to make the play over to first. So he boots two that's hit right at him and then goes up the middle and makes an outstanding backhand play, turns and throws Cooper out at first base to end the inning. We're heading to the top of the fourth. We still got a tie ball game here at the Kirk. Abby Turnage, lead mammography technologist, Highland Community Hospital. Mammograms are important because they help us do early detection. A mammogram is never going to keep you from getting breast cancer, but early detection is what is going to make you have your best possible outcome. We want you to get your mammogram as early as possible, and you should have those yearly beginning at age 40. Highland Community Hospital, here when you need us most. Dr. Lori Blackmer and Dr. Mark Hutto at Picayune Eye Clinic are experienced optometrists who are passionate about your vision care. Picayune Eye Clinic will cater to all of your vision needs, answer any eye care questions you may have, and supply you with the most up-to-date optometric information and fashion eyewear and frames in order to keep your eyes clear and healthy. They've been providing complete eye care for over 30 years. The clinic is at 908 6th Avenue in Picayune. Give Picayune Eye Clinic a call today at 601-798-4182 and begin to see things more clearly. We're here at the Kirk. 
Headed into the top of the fourth, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Come by the main branch and see Sheila Cooper or Linda Penton. Hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Alex Wade, the left fielder. Nope, sorry. Be Carson Pierce. Carson Pierce. I thought that was a two. I mean, a seven, not a two. The designated hitter, Carson Pierce, is going to hit. He'll take the first pitch. In there for a strike. Nope. Hitting in the number nine spot. Ben Davis, leadoff hitter, will be next. It's going to be up high for a ball. 1-1. One, one. So after a disastrous first uh, couple of innings, I mean, first couple of batters, we're going to try to settle in and battle back here to tie this ball game. That one's going to be outside for a ball. 2-1. That one's in there for a strike, 2-2. Two, two. Yeah, we talked about just wanting to chip away and chip away. Well, Tommy, they got the whole bag of chips in that last inning, and we're back into the new ball game. We are. Here's the 2-2, two, two, up high for a ball, 3-2. Just got a text that says, Tyler's listening. He was at the ball game earlier, but the rain drove him away, so he ran around the corner to, <laughs> to the hizzle, and he's listening. Hey, Tyler, that one's going to be up high. So after getting down 0-2, Carson Pierce, the number nine hole hitter, will draw a walk. And that's something we never like to see. Yeah. First of all, walking the nine-hole hitter, and second of all, walking the leadoff hitter of the inning. And we did them both there. Ben yeah. Davis now is going to step in for George County. And yeah, Davis is two for two tonight with a single to the four-hole and a double to left center. So runner at first, he'll step in. He hits from the left side. That was going to be drilled out into right field, but right at Brunson. I thought that was going to get down, Devin, off the bat, but it stayed up high. Yeah, Brunson had a beat on it very, very quick. So right off the bat, Brunson, Brunson hopped on his horse, and, and great great job getting to that ball out there. But, man, I, I tell you, Davis, he's going to be a threat probably all, all three games here with, with his bat in his hand. Yeah, I don't wish him any ill will, but if he got the stomach bug, he wouldn't hurt my feelings for the rest of the week. <laughs> he could swing the bat. Yeah. He plays like a coach's kid. He has struggled a little bit out there when the ball's hit right at him, but if you hit it left and right, he can go get it, and he can definitely swing the bat. Blaine Green, the catcher, is going to step in now. Pierce is still down at first. One out, tie ball game here in the fourth inning. Watts is going to throw over to first. Not close, but it will chase Pierce back. It comes up and deliver the pitch now to Green. That's going to be fouled off. 0-1 to the George County catcher. For those listening, softball team won tonight, 11 to one, and proves their their district record to four and one on the year. They they beat the Pascagoula Panthers tonight. Roll tie. Long trip back from the Gula. Here's the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Good, Good pitch breaking there. pitch there. Yeah, his his arm slot's kind of the same as Brady's. Their fastball and their and their curveball kind of comes out of the same arm slot. And it looked like a fastball for a split second, and the bottom just fell out of it. Here's the 0-2. That's going to be hit out into right field. Brunson's going to come Brunson. in. Make the play and then throw to first and almost doubled him off. First bait, the kid on first. Well, standing almost at second, when Brunson came in, I think he thought that ball was going to get down. Brunson got on his horse, came all the way in. Devin made the play, throw it first, and made it close. Yeah, it was a good job by Brunson. Being, being aware, just pulled the, pulled Morgan off the bag a little bit too much, and uh, just not in time, but a great job there. Gage Reeves, the center fielder, is going to step in now. It's going to be up high for a ball. We expect Reeves to be the Friday night starter. When we travel to Loosedale, that one's going to be hit, going to get down, and uh, going to get down into In Kyler's glove. glove. That's it. I thought it was going to get over Kyler, but he goes back, makes the play. So Watts retires the uh, next three after giving up a leadoff walk to Carson Pierce. With Pierce, we're headed to. The bottom of the fourth, you're listening to Brutai Baseball on WRJW. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? 
The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts silver sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. First Plains Express Car Wash in Picayune on Highway 11 North just past Coast Electric and on Highway 43 South just a quarter mile east of I-59 at Exit 4 now has new hours, 7.30 a.m. till 7 p.m. and from 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. on Sundays at the Highway 43 location. Get an early bird special Monday through Thursday and choose from a variety of wash packages. Get a monthly wash club starting as low as $20.99. Ask about their gift cards. Why do it yourself when you can let First Place Express Car Wash do it for you? If it doesn't shine... It ain't mine. We're back here at the Kirk where Landon Franklin's going to lead this one off. And also the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picky. Come by the main branch and see Sheila Cooper, Linda Penton, hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Heading to the bottom of the four, still got a tie ball game here. Still got Nielsen on the mound, and his first pitch is going to be outside for a ball. 1-0 to the designated hitter, Franklin. That one's going to be up I high. I thought it was in there, but called high. Well, to I, Frank, so he'll I, be 2 0. I knew he had a, a wide zone, Tommy, but that seemed to be from our point of view. That one's going to be in there for yeah. a strike 2 1. Yeah, Franklin reached on the air last inning. Oh, I'm sorry, in the bottom of the second. That one's going to be hit hard back up the middle and get through. Good job of hitting there by Franks. He got ahead in the count 2-1, got a fastball, hit it right back from whence it came. He'll stand down at first with a leadoff single. That'll bring up Brunson Stockstill, who was a busy man in the outfield last inning. Yep. Yeah, good job, good piece of hitting there by, by Franklin. I mean, as we've, we've talked, average isn't where we where he'd like it to be, but that's a good start to get the, make the climb back up. Uh, I mean, just I don't know if that comes from the simpl simpl simplification of his swing. Um, but, man, he, the bat was on his shoulder, and he just took the bat right to the ball and hit the ball right, like you said, right right where it came from. And uh, let's like see what, what Coach Evan can pull out of his hat here. Uh, yep. Brunson's going to square and hit him in the foul box. it off. Hit him in the box. Good job there, Bunning, but it foul, it came up, hit him. Well, luckily, White was still in the box, so it's just a strike. But now that will draw the ire of the first baseman and the third baseman. They will come in. Yeah. Brunson's a pretty good bunner. But he also slash. So we'll see if he'll try to slash. Now the third baseman's in on the grass. First baseman is holding on. The runner now spins around, and he does slash but misses. So he'll go 0-2. Yeah. yeah, good thought process here. I mean, good good attempts on, on really both of them. Uh, Evan had the – I, I kind of had the same, same thought process as Evan had. Uh, maybe not the slash, but – just Brunson kind of struggling to play a little bit. Yeah. And he's going to foul that one off, and that will be the third strike. So he did try to bunt with two strikes, and it stayed foul. And when you do that, that is an out. You can ask George County because they had to clarify that in a couple innings ago. So that'll bring Justin Soxton to play with one out. Franklin's still down at third. I mean, at first. That might want to be at third, but he's only at first. Parker helped to be on deck for the tie. Yep, let's see if the bottom, line, bottom half of the lineup can, can grind it out and flip it over to the top half of the lineup here. We've got a runner on first, leadoff runner, got to do something with it. That one's going to be up high for a ball. If you joined us late, you missed some excitement in the second. Orange <laughs> County scored four in their top half of the first. Go up four nothing, picking, scored four in the bottom of the second. That's going to be a hit and run but it's going to get foul. Franklin had a pretty good jump. Justin had a pretty decent pitch, but he fouls it off. So Franklin will have to go back. He'll step back in here with one, one count. One out. Runner on first, tie ball game, four, four to four here in the bottom of the four. Outside, two, one. Now to Jay Stock. Yeah. 
Here's a pitch. That's going to be in there for a call strike, 2-2. Two, two. Mm. That's a pretty good pitch. Stockstall took there, so now he's got himself in a hole, 2-2-1 two, two, out. Be a throw over to first. Franklin's back, not close. George County tonight in all blacks. Picune tonight in all whites. Well, pinstripes. That's going to be up high for a ball, 3-2. See if Justin can battle here. Just move the runner over would be nice. Swinging him in a foul ball. So he does stay alive here. Good crowd, even in a little bit of a rain. Yeah, it didn't scare people to their cars. And if, it, if it did, they must be back. Good student crowd here tonight, Tommy. That's right. Uh, swinging a miss by Justin. He got a pitch up. Well out of the zone, too. Just couldn't do anything with it. So he'll go fishing for a half fastball and miss. He'll go down on strikes. That'll bring up Parker Helton. Leadoff hitter now. He'll hit with two outs. And one out and one on. That's Landon Franklin down at first. Here's the first pitch to Helton. Franklin's going to go. That's going to be a hit and run. And Helton's going to. Tag it, but it's going to stay foul down the third base line, right over the top of the hitting facility. Yeah, I know they're hitting runs, but Franklin's had a good jump the past two times. He has. It's been on. I mean, uh, Nilsson's got a big, big leg kick and takes him a second to get to the plate, but I think Franklin would have had a chance on both. Yeah, Franklin, he runs like a lineman sometimes, but he had, I think he'd had both of those stolen. Uh, Swing and a miss there by Helton. Well, Tommy, to play offensive guard and in the picking an offense, <laughs> yeah, you, you got to run. run. You got to know how to run. You got to run. You're right. Touche. He ask is the, a lineman. Ask he this is one, a guard. Ask this one three down from me. Yeah. You're exactly right. So we'll see what he does here. 0-2. He stays put. Helton's going to foul that one off and stay alive. If we get that man a bat that was at least 30 inches long, I believe he could probably hit more home runs. But yeah, we got him swatting with a 13 to 14 year old. Matt, here he comes set. Now he's going to hit that one into right field, but I believe it's going to be playable. Ooh. Wow, that ball that, carried, that Tommy. That ball carried out there, and it was an adventure for Trip Lightsey, but he pulls it in. So Tide tries to make a little bit of noise. They leave one on base. We're headed into the top of the fifth. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm a lost bee that found my way into your car. And now that I'm in here, <laughs> good luck getting me out. I think it's gone. Wait, no, it's in my hair. And if you don't have the right auto insurance coverage, well, this could be quite a sticky situation. So get Allstate. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fire and Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. At Sonic Drive-In of Picayune, Tuesday after 5 p.m. till close is family night with half-off cheeseburgers. Sonic Drive knows how hard it is sometimes to feed your whole family, and we want to give you a break on Tuesday nights. Half-price cheeseburgers. It's how Sonic Drive-In helps you feed your family. Remember that Sonic Drive-In at Vicki Yoon on Highway 11, just north of Highway 43 North, is happy eating at its best. Tuesday's family night with half-price cheeseburgers. That's what you get at Sonic Drive-In of Vicki Yoon. We're back here at the Kirk, where the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Vicki Yoon. Hometown Community Spirit, Hometown Community Pride, member FDIC. Landon Watts still out on the bump for the Tide. First pitch to Havard is going to be up high for a ball, 1-0. Havard's the third baseman, had a pretty good night, I think, so far. You got any statisticals on him? That one's going to hit him. Come inside with a fastball and hit him on the arm, and he'll head down to first for a leadoff base runner. Trip Lightsey, the right fielder, will step in now for George County. Well, 
you hate to see that, but I mean, I don't know. Who knows if Landon works a little bit better with runners on? He got one on the first, the leadoff runner in the only last inning, and mowed down the next three. See if George County decides to do anything. PQ tried a couple of different hit and runs in there. Last half inning of work. See what George County does. Lysy's going to square around. Now he's going to pull it back and slash and hit it into the dugout, third base, for a foul ball 0-1. So he squared, got Cooper to move, pulled back. Tried to hit it that way, just got it foul. And I'll be honest, Devin, I hate that play. We do it a lot. I don't yep. like it. I just don't like the slash. Nothing wrong with it. It's legal, but right. I just don't like it. I like it a little bit because I, I did it one time in high school and it worked. Scored some runs. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're clinging to that? That's right. That's right. And it was against, <clears throat> it was against Carrier, and so it made it a little bit, little bit more special as the maroon tied alma, alma mater. There you go. That curveball is going to be in there for a strike. 0-2. Oh, Now to Lightsky. Oh, it's going to come set. Good that was going to be a nice breaking pitch. Gets him swinging and a missing. So he'll head down on strikes back to the dugout. That'll bring the pitcher, Andrew Nielsen, to the plate. He'll hit with one out, one on. And a tie ball game here in the top of the fifth. I'll remind you, we come back in the bottom of the fifth. Devin has a doozy, doozy of a Paul's Pastry Shop Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Yeah, I think I'm going to keep him butter crunch today, Tommy. That's what I'm talking about. I like it. That happens. We're going to start giving you a time limit. you got 45 seconds. If you can't get it in 45 seconds, then the butter crunch is default to me and Devin. I think that should be a rule. All right, here's the first pitch to Nielsen. That's going to be a swing and a miss, 0-1. Alex Wade, the left fielder, will be in the on-deck circle for George County. Yeah, Nelson's one for two today. It's going to be outside for a ball, 1-1. One, one. I think Nelson would have lost it if he had called that one strike. It was on the outside corner. It was close, but he has not given that call to Nelson. Yeah, it may have night. been a little low, too, Tommy. Six-foot-three frame. <laughs> uh, he reaches out there for the same pitch and fouls off. Yeah, he wouldn't let that one go by twice in a row. Yeah, with you. One, two, now to the big right-handed pitcher. Here's the one, two, one out. One on, swing and a miss. Strike three. Good breaking pitch up high. Tommy, that was a slider at the at the chest. <laughs> yeah. You don't see a lot of those, do you? No. Nope. 70 mile an hour slider to a 6'3 guy that was up above the letters, but it was successful. He heads down to the dugout. Now it's way the left fielder will hit now for George County with two outs. Still got a runner at first. And it's a good breaking pitch that he's not called a strike. 1-0. That was close, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. I think he's got the inside corner and the outside corner. It broke so much, but neither were called, so it's 1-0 to wait. That one's going to be fouled off. That'll even count at 1-1. What's that fastball registering at? Uh, he's, when he rares back, 85-86. Yeah. And then a 70-72 on the breaking pitch. And that's, that's that's good velocity difference there. Because yeah. I've talked about it a good bit. His fa- his curveball and, and fastball delivery there. Strike two falls in there. The arm slot. Doesn't change, which is which is very beneficial to the pitcher and uh, and critical to the, to the swing and misses on the curveball. That one's going to be up high for a ball. That he's going to what a shot! The runner's going to try to get the second, and Bayless is going to throw him out. Mason Bayless says, "Not only can our starting catcher throw people out, but I know how to do it too. If you try to steal a base, I can get you, and he does. So that'll end it." Wade will be up when we come back to the next half of their inning, but we're going to come back here after just one spot. Devin's going to give you the Paul's Pastry Shop trivia question. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW.
601-749-4939 or visit the website at www.moreslashcairo.com. We're back here at the Kirk, where we're heading into the bottom of the fifth. Got a tie ball game, and the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picayune. Come by the main branch and see one of our friendly loan officers, Keith Robinson, Judy Lowry, Aldridge Spears, David Levy, Christina Ladner, Amy Kirkland, Julie Jackson, and Colin Thompson. Hometown community spirit, hometown community pride. Kyler King is going to lead it off for the tide here in the bottom of the fifth. After this pitch, we'll let Devin read the Paul Patriot Shop trivia question. It's going to be up high for a ball, 1-0. i got to turn you up, though. Now yeah, you can do it. They can, now they can hear me. Trivia question for tonight. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher. That's going to be a ball hit to the second baseman. Second baseman is going to pick it up, throw over to first, and make the first out of the inning. Jump back to it. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who over a three-year span – Led his league in wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. Jamie Lumpkin's going to step in here, and I'm going to let you read that one again. That first pitch is going to be in there for a strike of one. Read again, it again. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who over a three-year span led his league in wins the first year, losses the second, and wins again in the third. That one's going to be hit the third. Third base is going to catch it on one hop but cannot make the throw across the diamond. It'll get past the first baseman, and Jamie will get into second. That'll be an E-5. So he'll stand down at second on a two-base error, and Morgan Kraft's going to step in here. So if you know the answer, 601-590-5950. Text your name and the answer, 601 590 5950, text your name and the answer. One more time, read the question. One more time. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who over a three-year span led his league in wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. Morgan Kraft steps in here with Jamie at second. Tie ball game in the bottom of the fifth. One out. You're caught up, and you got the trivia question, and you're on the clock. Text your name and your answer. 601-590-5950. 601-590-5950. That's going to be the old hidden ball trick. Try to make the play to second. And uh, pretend that it goes into center field. Jamie is not fooled. He just stands on the bag and looks at the pitcher who finally pulls his hand out of his pocket with the ball and says, okay, I'll step back on the mound and we'll keep playing here. Tommy, I've seen that in Little Big League. The movie, you ever yeah, seen the movie Little Big League? That's the only time I've ever seen that. <laughs> Never seen it live. That one's going to be hit out into right field, and that's going to be a base hit. Jamie's going to come around third. There's going to be a play at the plate, and the throw beat him, but the catcher did not have the baseball, and so he'll get down and be safe at home, and Morgan will go to second on the throw. So that's a single to right with an RBI. Puts the score at 5-4. to four. I think, quite honestly, out there, the right fielder, Trip Lightsey, he would have he would have had him. Devin, throw wasn't bad. Tommy, the catcher, throw, catcher throw was just, on the money. Yeah, catcher just could not hold on to the ball. I mean, it, it pulled him a little little high with his with his glove side arm, but it tipped out of the glove and went past him. But I mean, there was some animation in right field. The right fielder was highly upset. He, I mean, took his glove off, threw it on the ground. I mean. A little much, in my opinion, but, I mean, that's part of the competition, part that's of the right. animation of the game. And, um, but, yeah, Todd's lucky there. Got away with one. I mean, he he had him by a long shot. It was a great throw by the right fielder. Uh, when I saw the, him fielding it, and I saw <clears> – and also, I don't know if you noticed or not, but Jamie kind of stumbled around the bag at third and was able to recover, of course, but uh, that slowed him down even more. Landon Watts is going to step in now with a runner at second. Tied on top, now five to four. Let me see the answer to that trivia question. I got a couple of uh, guys. No, I have no right answers. I see a couple of answers come in. No right answers yet. Keep keep it trying. That was going to be hit in the hole between third and short. The pinch runner is going to have to hold up down there at third base. That pinch runner, is that, is that Ben Bird? Looks like it. I can't see a number. So Landon will single. 
And that was a not a pinch runner, it was a courtesy runner, Ben courtesy. Bird. Yep. So uh, Ian Herring's going to come in for. He's going to. So I think that's Ben Bird. I'll get you a number. I'm pretty sure that's who that is. He stands down at third now. He came in for Jamie. Ian Herring's going to run for um, Landon down at first. We're going to have a pitch and change. We'll step away, give you an opportunity to keep keep uh, guessing away. Read that trivia question one more time before we go to break. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who over a three-year span led his league and wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. We'll be back here, Maroon Tide Baseball. WRJW. Welcome to the river where education meets excellence. Join the Wildcat family and dive into our lively campus. Make friends, join clubs, get involved, and create memories. Experience academic excellence with our dedicated faculty. Explore cutting edge facilities designed for your success. Choose PRCC for an education that shapes your future. Pearl River, where you can roar with champions. We're back here in the bottom of the fifth. We're tied at taking a five to four lead. Still threatening with more. We're going to have Cooper Moreau is going to hit here. Let me get that number and tell you who the new pitcher is for George County. Can you see his number? Is that 22? I cannot. Kenyon Reeves, I think is who that is. Number 22. He's a junior right. Hander. And so uh, we're having a little bit of discussion between the umpires and, umpires the, first and the first base coach. Um, I'm not sure what the discussion was. They're making Ian Heron come back. Ian Harrison has been the courtesy runner for Landon all night long. I'm not sure why they would not want him to do it now, but we'll see what the what the call is here. Coach Evan is is having a, some intense moments of fellowship with both umpires here. Still got some uh, still got some uh, guesses, but no right guesses. Got a lot of guesses. I'll tell you some of the guesses that are wrong. Jim Palmer, Gaylord Perry, Cy Young, Phil Neeker. Those are all wrong guesses. Denny McLean is is a wrong guess too. It's, I told you this was a doozy. Read it again while we're still having a, having some uh, conversations here. Question is named the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who over a three-year span led his league and wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. Hall of Fame is your key there. Hall of Fame is your key. All right, so now Brandon Pomez is going to go down and run, and I, I'm honestly not sure what that's about because – not sure why they made Ian here and not run, but for whatever reason, Ian had to come out. Gomez is going to go down the first. So he'll stand at first. Ben Bird, courtesy running for Jamie, is going to be at third. Number seven, Cooper Moreau. Cooper Moreau is going to step in here with one out. Tide leads this one 5 4 in the bottom of the fifth. Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Been a doozy so far. I don't have a right answer. I'm getting some more answers. They're wrong, too. Keep them coming. Swing and a miss by Cooper 01. I have unlimited messages, so keep them coming. Danny Terrio. Hey, Danny, long time no see, but the answer's wrong. Both of them. <laughs> I appreciate you playing, and I'm good to hear from you, but it's still wrong. I need some more answers. Sandy Koufax is a wrong answer. That one's going to be down low for a ball 1-1. The Google machine is working tonight. Just don't have the right answer yet. Those butter crunches are on the line. 1-1. One, one, one out. Two on. Swing and a miss by Coop. 1-2. Tide can bust this one open here. Got a junior Kenyon Reeves in Sidewinder. That one's going to be hit on the ground to the first baseman. Pomez, um, Bird is going to score. Pomez is going to get thrown out at second. So they'll push, a, push across a run. First baseman will go to second and get the lead runner. But cannot turn the double play. Yeah, Tommy, you, you think the ball hit that close to the bag. Uh, more of a, in, in my opinion, a 
easier double play would have been to step on his bag and throw it to second, then to make the tag. But nonetheless, good job by Cooper. Just doing his job, getting the ball on the ground so that run from Holt from third can score. So Frank will step in now. That's in there for a strike, 0-1. And did Franklin know he hit, had a single last time up. Sidewinder delivery that I believe should be illegal in all forms of baseball. I do not believe he should be able to throw submarine sidewinder because I couldn't hit him. <laughs> I was about to ask why. <laughs> I could not hit him, and I don't like him. 1-1 one, one pitch. Frank's going to hit that one on the button, but it's going to be straight at the center fielder, and he's going to make the third out of the inning. So Frank gave it a ride, but straight to the center field. So we're going to head into the top of the six. Tide pushes across two. They lead this one now six to four. Nobody protects you from mayhem like Allstate. I'm thick cut bacon sizzling on your stove. And while you were over there smearing your bagel, this little piggy went on a splatter spree. And if you don't have the right home insurance coverage, you'll be crying wee, wee, wee over this fire in your home. So get all state. Jason Pigott has offices in Picayune. Make sure you have the right coverage. Give the Pigott Agency a call today. 601-798-7005. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Vehicle and Property Insurance Company and Affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. Get back in the game with Dodd Therapy Center. Jamison Dodd has the specialties and experience to get your athlete back in the game, including indoor turf, hivamat, blood flow restriction, trigger point dry needling, and much more. Dr. Dodd and Dodd Therapy Center is also specializing in treating Parkinson's disease and other neurological disorders. Give Dodd Therapy Center a call at 769-242-2636 or visit us at 405 Memorial Boulevard in Picayune and get back in the game. We got a duel going on, not only on the mound, but on my uh, my uh, cellular mobile phone. Lots of people texting in, but I don't have a right answer yet. We're going to give you a hint. We are in the top of the six. Number seven, Alex Wade, who is the left fielder, is going to lead it off. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking, where the customer is always first. Go by and see Chantel Thady at the West Canal Branch for all your banking needs. Landon Watts is still pitching. That's going to be a bunt down to Cooper. Cooper's going to pick it up, throw across the diamond, and Kraft comes off and cannot complete the throw. I didn't think the throw was bad by Cooper, but it caused Kraft to come up the line a little bit. And so that'll be a – I'll have to give that an error on Coop over there, which is a tough one. But nevertheless, we'll have a base runner on first on pitch. Garrett Dixon – the uh, first baseman will hit now. Who's the team that this happened for, Devin? Give me the team. Ooh. The team. Can I give it one more hint before yeah, that right, one? Go ahead and give him one more hint. That's going to be outside for a ball. All no, right. that's in there for a strike. I'm sorry, 0-1. There was another player to do this. His name was Eddie Psychote, maybe, if that's how you pronounce his last name. He also did this from 1917 to 1919. With the Chicago was, White Sox. But he was not a Hall of Famer. But he was not a Hall of Famer. Okay. There's your hint. There's your hint. 1-1 one, one now. The Dixon, that one's going to be up high for a ball, 2-1. Nolan Ryan is not the right answer. Had that one a couple of different times. Led the team in wins, then led the team in losses. Led the league. Led the league in losses. Oof. That was going to be hit out into right field. Brunson's going to come over and make the play. That'll be the second out of the inning. Thought about slinging it into first. Thought better of it. Now I'll read it one more time. Name the only modern era Hall of Fame pitcher who, over a three-year span, led his league in wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. Led the league in wins, then losses, then wins over a three-year span, and he is a Hall of Famer swinging a miss by Carson Pierce. We've got one out here in the sixth. One on. Tide leads this one six to four. So that's going to be a foul attempt. It's going to be out or uh, fouled off. I will say the question is worded weird. specifically. Yeah. Weird, but it's it's Hall of Fame pitcher and led his league and wins the first year, losses the second year, and wins again in the third. Still getting guesses. None of them are right. 
This is better than the pitching duel that's happening here with Watts. Watts is going to deliver that one. That's going to be hit down the right field line. Brunson's coming over, and that's going to be a fair ball. Hit right on the chalk line, and no man's laying out there, and Brunson couldn't get to it. Jamie couldn't get out there to it, so that's going to be a C&I single. And it, the runner on first had to hang out just to see if the anybody could run that ball down. So he can only get one base. So you got runners at first and second now. The leadoff hitter, Ben Davis, and he can swing it. He steps in now, runners at first and second. His team is down by two. Yeah, Davis is two for three tonight. Squared up every every pitch that he's I mean every ball that he's hit he squared it up. First pitch in there for a strike. That one's going to be chopped to first. That Morgan's going to pick it up, step on the bag for the second out. So Morgan. Made it a little more interesting than he probably wanted to. The ball was chopped to him. He knocked it down, picked it up, recorded the second out of the inning. Tommy, I think I have a winner. You got a winner? Yes, somebody Facebook messaged me. Okay, well, that's not really a, an official means of. Well, they didn't. They didn't. You didn't give them my number. Oh, they, well, and, well and, I gave them mine. <laughs> I gave them mine. They they just trying to cut me out of the butter crunches. That's what's trying to happen yep, here. Yep. 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 Well, Tommy, okay. hold the, on. We'll give it to him in just a second. You got the right answer. Are you sure? I do have the right okay. answer. All right, all right. So that ball is going to be up high to Blaine Green now. Got a runner at second and third. One zero count, two outs here in the top of the six. Tide leads at six four. It's going to be outside for a ball two zero. How many pitches can you? I know I'm making you go back and forth. How many pitches so far from Watts? He's come in and done a pretty good job of putting up some zeros so far. It's going to be up high 3-0. Yeah, he came in, what was that, Tommy? That, that was the top of the third. He came came in with one out. And uh, so that would be three and a third works, worth of inning. 45 pitches right there. That one's in there for a strike, 3-1. 45 pitches. Green. So you think he'd, he'd – you believe he'd, he'll see the game out? I do. Pending, I do. pending I, it goes yeah, I the do. way it's going. I do think if he can get out of this, I do think he will pitch in the seventh. As he's pitched here in the sixth. Runners at second and third right now. Two outs, three, one count. Catcher Blaine Green's hitting for George County. He's going to go down and have a conversation. I think I got a right answer here too, but you already got it. So we're going to I got mine in at 8:53. I think Tyler Penton finally gave me he, he guessed everybody in the major leagues from 1926 <laughs> to 1994. He, he, yeah. And he finally got one, but I think you're late, Tyler. That was going to be in there for a strike 3-2. George County doesn't like it, but that was a good pitch. Good pitch. 3-2. Coach Davis is still upset down there at third base. I think he's still aggravated about the ball call. That one's going to be fouled off. The count will remain 3-2. Umpires, I will say this, the umpires letting them, letting them jibber-jabber. That's Maybe for more sure. Than, That's more for than sure. I would. But Landon got back. That was pretty good for Landon. He got right back on the mound and went right back at him. He does so again. 3-2, two, two outs. Runners at second and third. Here's the pitch. That one's going to be hit hard out into left field. Justin's going to come up and make the play. So an, another bit of traffic for George County. But the Tide is able to keep them uh, off of home plate. They've done so so far in five of the six innings that we've played. We had two, the bottom of the six. Tide leads this one six to four. Are you tired of the same old mundane service you get when you need to get an oil change for your car or truck? Do you feel like you have to be the first person there to get in line to get your oil changed that day? Tired of having to get up before the chickens to beat the crowd? Well, it's different at Pit Lane Oil Change in Picayune. J.R. Pascal and his Pit Lane crew make sure you're in and out in a timely manner. And you don't need an appointment either. 
They're open Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. till 5 p.m. and Saturdays from 8 a.m. till 12 noon. The pit lane crew inspects your vehicle to make sure the fluids, belts, lights, tire pressure, battery, and wiper blades are in good working order to keep you on the road in your ride. And they will vacuum the inside of your vehicle as a little extra touch from the crew at Pit Lane Oil Change. Come experience for yourself why people keep coming back to Pit Lane Oil Change time after time. They're located at 401 Highway 11 North, just three blocks north of East Canal, right by the railroad tracks. You can call us at 601-798-0017. Come experience the difference. Pit Lane Oil Change, your personal pit crew. Tommy Upton here with Devin Hedgepath, and I think we have a winner. I'm going to let you read it. I want to remind you before you do, the first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking, checking savings, loans, mortgages. If you need it, they've got it. FNB Picking, your hometown bank. Give us a Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe trivia question. Answer is Hal Newhauser. Hal Newhauser. Hal Who's your winner? Hal Newhauser is the answer. Pitched for the Detroit Tigers in 1946-48. to 48. And the winner is Mackenzie Lee. Mackenzie is the wife of Coach Trenton Lee. Okay. So, Mackenzie, congratulations. Brunson Stocks was going to lead it off. He's going to square the bunt and take a ball up high. So we're going to put an asterisk by those butter crunches because we didn't say you could you could enter in via Facebook. And Tyler Penton actually got it right. He, he finally got down to how he is. It took him a while to get to the H's, but he finally got in there. It's so going to be ball two. Let's go, B. She told me, she said she couldn't type your number fast enough each time you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I need to slow down. I was getting excited. All this, all this excitement happened around here. That's going to be in there for strike two a lot, one. A lot of animation tonight, Tommy. <laughs> All right, so we'll we'll, we'll uh, remove the asterisk. Remove there. the asterisk. We'll say that's okay. That's okay. It's two one. To, uh, Brunson's going to be outside three one. Yeah, the George County faithful is kind of getting a little little agitated tonight. Uh, yeah, they're all over these the last time. last inning. That one's going to be hit to the first baseman, who will pick it up and step on the bag for the first out of the inning. Inside out. Excuse me. Hit down to first. We'll record the first out for the tie. So Justin Stockstill will step in now. Here in the top of the seven. Now we're going to have a pitch hitter. And that's going to be Turner Pugh. It's going to hit for J Stock. You better. Number 14. Turner Tommy, correct me if I'm Pugh. wrong. In high school, you can re enter. You can re enter once. Into, into the field one time. That's right. One time. So Stockstall could come back in the bottom of the uh, – in the um, – I'm sorry, we're in the bottom of the six. In the top of the seven, he could come back defensively. We'll see what happens. Turner Pugh's going to step in here with one out, nobody on. Tied leading 6-4. That one's going to be in there for a strike, 0-1. Oh, Tommy, do you want to tell our Paul's Pastry Trivia question what they've won? Yeah, they've won a $10 gift certificate. You need to run by the radio station during regular business hours. Swing and a miss or swing and a foul ball by Pew. Oh, two, you've won a $10 gift certificate to Paul's Pastry Shop, Mardi Gras Cafe. You can use that however you wish, but our suggestion is you take that $10 gift certificate and yes, he did go for it. No, he did not go. One, two. You take that $10 gift certificate and you tell him to put as many butter crunches in that box as it'll hold, or that $10 will buy you. And then we also suggest that you put in a little bit of your money, at least another $10, and you load it up, and you bring those to us here next week. Um, we'll be here, might not be here on Saturday, swinging a miss by Pete. He'll go down on strikes, two outs here in the sixth. But you, yep. can, you can make that donation to Devin and I, or you can bring them to another place that we'll meet you. We're, we're pretty open to butter crunches. Yeah, I mean, we, you can't keep those. It's not necessarily for us. You want it. But, right. I mean, the right thing to do is. I mean, to, we, we provided the fun. We provided the. That's right. That's going to be outside the help. No one. one we, we provided the Google, the tough Google search. That's right. We challenged you. We, we made you use your Google fingers. Helton's going to hit that one through the hole. That's going to be a single out into left field. It's going to get by the third baseman. And going to get by the diving shortstop. So a C&I single out in the left. Petey will stand down at first. Kyler King will step in now with two outs. Died not done here in the bottom of the sixth. Tommy, that ball had some English on it. It did. It, it kinda, was a, I mean, it, it cued out there, didn't it? It was the second ball tonight to catch that lip in the right right way for the tie, wrong way for the for the, for George County tonight. But uh, it was a chopper that turned into a 
hard ground ball. It hit that lip on the infield grass and just ran straight into the outfield. That's the third baseman was expecting a chop. King will step in here with two outs. Petey's going to go. It's going to be a throw. It's going to be close, and he's out. He's out. That was a good throw there by Blaine Green and a good tag by the shortstop as they caught Petey stealing. It was bang, bang. But give credit where credit is due. So we'll head into the top of the seventh. George County's down to their last three outs. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Hey friends, camping's a spring thing, and spring is here. Check out this new 2024 Wildwood FSX 174BH. This travel trailer has a front queen bed, rear bunks, and only weighs 2,899 pounds. MSRP is 24,398, reduced to only 13,988. A brand new 2024 bunkhouse trailer for only 13,988. Off Walls Campers is not that far from where you are. Come and see us. Highland Community Hospital continues to do what is best for patients in our new Wound Healing Center. Now open and staffed by a specialized team of doctors, nurses, and techs, we treat diabetic patients and others with serious wounds that have resisted traditional treatment and need special care. Located on the first floor in our outpatient department, our medical professionals will tailor a treatment plan to meet your specific needs, working to treat the whole person and not just the wound. For more information, visit www.highlandch.org. We're heading to the top of the seventh. Leading off is going to be Gage Reeves, the center fielder for George County. The first pitch of every inning is brought to you by your hometown bank, FNB Picking, where the customer is always first. Go by and see Chantel Thady, the West Canal branch, for all your banking needs. That first pitch is going to be outside for a ball to Reeves. Watt's still out there. That's a swing and a miss by Reeves. So leaving the count at 1-1. We had a 6-4 ball game here in the top of the seventh. Todd looking to close this one out after giving up four in the first inning to start this game off. That one's in there for a strike, 1-2. Up high is for a ball, 2-2. George County scored four in the first. They did. They were helped by a couple of errors and a couple of hits. And they've been quiet so far. Picking scored four in the second, and then two in the fifth. They've each team has committed three errors. Swing and a miss. Just fans at a breaking pitch outside and made him look silly there, Devin. Yeah. Landon, Landon, Watts has done, Landon Watts has done a great, great job tonight. Coming in after Brady. Brady gave up only one earned run, three unearned runs by some defensive miscues in the first inning. But Landon has done a great job tonight by coming in and shutting this George County lineup down so far. It's in there for a strike to Kaylor Havard, third baseman. He'll start his at bat 0-1. Now 1-1 as that pitch is up high. Watt's still throwing 87 on the gun, so he hasn't lost a lot of velocity. That one's going to be bounced back to Watts. He'll take it, toss it over to first, and record the second out of the inning. So George County down to their final out. Trip Lightsey, the right fielder. We'll step in here. His team's trailing by two. He represents the last out for the Maroon Tide. So we're going to miss 91 on the gun there. So Watts went back a little deep. I think that's the first time I've seen that from, from Watts little, on the mound. Got a little something extra. That one's at 89. That's going to be a high chopper to Watts. He's going to pick it up, flip it to first, oh. and throw it away. Not a bad play. He set his feet a high, high chopper. He set his feet. But flipped it, just didn't flip it in the right direction. Yeah, if, I'm not gonna say. Well, I am gonna say the words, but maybe not the intent behind it. But got a little cute with it, I guess. I, that's all I can think to. But kind of flipped it instead of just set his feet and throwed it correctly over the top. But kind of threw it kind of like an Andrew Jones type throw from the sidearm <laughs> yeah, slot. Yeah, but the sidearm slot that went awry. So now we've got a runner on second. Tying run is now at the plate. And that's the new pitcher, Canyon Reeves, and he'll take the first pitch for a ball. 
So George County did what they wanted to do in this inning, which is get the tying run to the plate. That one's going to be down low for a ball, 2-1 to Reeves. Reeves came in two innings ago and relieved Nielsen. This is his first at bat. That one's going to be hit hard and a fair ball. Down the third baseline, that will score Leitsky easily. And that's going to get Reeves into second base with a double. That ball was just pelted down the line. Yeah, great piece of hitting. Uh, great piece of execution there by executing on top of Picu's air. And uh, that's going to warn a, a draw, draw out from the dugout to Coach Evan. Go talk to this infield, talk to this pitcher. Um, so you're going to have Alex Wade step in here, left fielder for George County. As Devin said, Skip's going to head out and have a conversation with the entire infield and his pitcher. And this is probably more of just a, hey, calm down. It really doesn't mean anything. But now we got the time run. It's standing at second base. So that's quite different from the time run is at home and they're batting. Now is at second base. But the good news is that if you're a Tide fan is you only got one out here to get. So any mistake, ground ball, strikeout, pop up, we'll take it. We'll sneak out of here with a win. Not our best performance so far this year, but very scrappy George County team has played well tonight. And I don't think they're done here. Here's Wade stepping in. We'll see his first pitch. 6-5 ball game, runner at second. Swing and a miss, 0-1. Yeah, Todd need to bear down here. Can't, can't have any miscues here. Uh, unfortunate scene of the night is five runs by the George County. That one's going to be lifted, but it's going to stay foul. Get out of play, Five, two. five runs by George County tonight, but only one earned run tonight, Tommy. You got yeah. four, four defensive miscues on, on the Tide scoreboard tonight. Um, and they'll have no more earned runs if they do score this inning because it should have been out of that with that air earlier. That That's one's going to be strike three. Landon painted the outside corner with a fastball, and he sends Wade to the dugout, and he sends George County back to Loosedale, and they'll start this series going down to the Tide 6-5. Um, to five. We'll head to Loosedale on Friday night. Let's see if we can make it a, a, a two-run or two two-game lead by the time. We're going to take just a 30-second break. We'll come back. Devin's going to have a Sonic player of the game. We'll give you a recap, and we'll look ahead to Friday night. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. Looking for a gym to help you become a healthier you? The gym at Picayune is the place to be with its large open facility, modern equipment, and knowledgeable staff led by owner and operator Edgar Woods. The gym at Picayune offers a variety of workouts and classes to meet your specific needs with 24-7 access. The gym accepts Silver Sneakers, which is available at no cost for adults 65 plus through select Medicare plans. More space, more equipment, more growth. The gym at Picayune. Tommy Upton along with Devin Hedgepath back here at the Kirk as the tie takes this one 6-5. to five. George County scores four in the first. They score another one in the seventh, but the Tide's able to record the final strikeout and uh, put this one away. So, Devin, a lot of, uh, I would say, a little bit of uh, drama here and there. Some of it self-induced, some of it man-made. Other times, Picayune was, looked a little, uh, uh, let, me, let me use the right word, looked a little, defenseless out there in the field, but the end result is bats came alive, got a few key hits, got some really good relief pitching by Landon Watson. Really not a bad starting pitching performance by um, by Brady. Right. Overall, not our best performance, but it's a win, and we'll take a win. Yeah, for sure, Tommy. I mean, it's you, – you, you hit it right on – you hit the head right – hit the nail right on the head tonight. Just It, it looked a little defenseless in the field, and – but the timely hitting and the good relief pitching and uh, just all around not desirable performance by the Tide. Um, a lot of a lot of things to take away from this game, but uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's a good win, but the, the, like I said a second ago before we got out of the inning, was the the unfortunate scene of tonight was five runs by the opposing team, but only one was earned, um, and so that that's a big big takeaway from from tonight as far as defense goes. Uh, 
But overall, I mean, great, like you said, great job by Brady starting the game off. He only had he had the one earned run. Uh, Brady went two, two, two and one third of an inning, and Landon came in to shut the door for four and two thirds of an inning uh, of almost scoreless work, but earned runs wise scoreless work. And so uh, he had six strikeouts in those four, four and two thirds innings. Um, Brady had three, so nine strikeouts from the pitching staff tonight. Um, but overall, I think I think as far as the uh, Sonic player of the game goes, Tommy, I think we got, think we got to give it to to Landon Watts. He came in uh, and sh- just shut the door. I mean, he he shut down this George County hitting squad that that kind of lit it up to not lit it up, but uh, hit it back to back to back to lead off the game as we saw. And uh, Brady did a good job settling in, but uh, Landon took those reins and and ran with them even harder. So Landon Watts will be the Sonic player of the game. Mackenzie Lee is the Paul's Pastry Shop Mardi Gras Cafe trivia winner. Maroon Tide is the winner of the night as they take the first game of the series 6-5 to five over the George County Rebels, and they improve to 7-0 and oh in district play. We'll do this again Friday night in Loosedale. We'll be on uh, the stream, and we'll be covering it with a video feed on our YouTube channel also. So pick us up about 6.50 on um, – Friday night, and then we'll be back here at the Kirk Saturday afternoon. I'm not sure if that one will be uh, on the stream or not. We'll let you know Friday night whether we're going to be able to cover that one. But Lord willing, and the creek don't rise, we'll be in Loosedale Friday night. We'll bring that one to you. Devin, I appreciate you sitting in tonight. Good to have you back at our side. You brought a little drama, a little fire, and we needed that. Anything to say as we close out? Well, glad to be back. Uh, I won't be in attendance on Friday night. Katie Ann's got a game. Uh, Ty looked to Look to eat, look to sweep Pasigula Pan, uh, uh, Panthers and softball, so I'll be attending that home game Friday night. But uh, other than that, if you if you see someone you you know or even you don't know, share the love of Jesus with them and uh, tell your loved ones you love them. Give them a hug around the neck. You never promise tomorrow. God bless. You're listening to Maroon Tide Baseball on WRJW. We'll see you Friday night. At Sonic Drive-In of Picayune, Tuesday after 5 p.m. till close is Family Night with half-off cheeseburgers. Sonic Drive knows how hard it is 